And then the other thing was, uh, oh yeah, um, yeah. Uh, as far as the COVID goes and everything, yeah, we're all fine here. Actually, there never, never was a problem. Um, it was, I mean, we got sick. We were a little worried that we'd get sicker, but nobody got sicker. We just got like a cold. Good. I couldn't even call it the flu. I mean, Good. really. Um, so it was like a week, but more of it was worry than it was uh, any getting sick. Mm -hmm. as far as, you know, Carol's father was 90 and um, he had COPD and all kinds. I mean, he was, he was really, oh. you know, every day he would wake up and say, when's the Lord going to take me, you know? Oh. And then this came, it was really, it was, he was oh. surrounded by family. We had a hospice there. We did not go through the hospital. I mean, went to the hospital okay. quickly, and then they mm -hmm. said there's basically nothing they could do for him. And he was happy, and you know, so it was all good. I, and the only reason I'm sharing, I'm, I'm sharing that with you because I shared it with you before, and I just wanted to let you know. So anyway, um, it was all it was all very, very good. So we're all good here, and I hope you guys are too. And Mm -hmm. All I can tell you by my experience with COVID is I, I was actually trying to get it. So I could, we could always stay together. Did he <laughs> recover? I don't want to get it. And I didn't. Did your relative get recover? It. And then they got it, but I, but it wasn't much. It wasn't much of a big deal. So you're very lucky. That's all Rob, I can say. You're yeah, Rob, you, didn't, yeah. you don't know if you might have had antibodies because you had it asymptomatically prior to your daughter and wife getting it. Th that might be exactly what it is. Yeah. yeah. That I happens to all my, I have, you know, uh, my yeah. dance instructors went through it and all tested later and had antibodies and never had a clue that they had it. Hmm. Isn't that weird? I don't know. I, you know, yeah, I, yeah. I, I mean, never have got sick. Spreading is really strange. Yeah, but it's part of the mix. It's part of the gig. It's crazy. Yeah. So. They say they say forty percent of people who get it uh, are not sick, like what you're describing. Yeah. Forty percent. Yeah. You don't know which one you are. Uh -huh. Yeah. Some of them, you know, are very very sick, and some of them die. So, by the way, Rob. Uh, yeah. You said you were already recording, but I don't see the little red dot that says recording. Because I'm recording yeah. on oh, my OBS see. software. I'm, oh, I'm recording I, that. Yeah, okay, okay. It's a different way of recording, yeah. But thank you. Thank you for telling me, because I might go back to Zoom. I don't know. We'll see how this goes. It should be good, though. I'm sure the quality yeah. will be good. So, no, but if you recording on OBS, you should record on Zoom. It will not uh, affect. If you record the Zoom on cloud, it shouldn't be. It, it won't. You you're saying it won't tax my computer too much? No, no. If you record on Zoom, it doesn't use your CPU power at all. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, okay. I mean, I can record it, and then you know. Yeah, we can compare the differences. How's that? I'll yeah, record that. Uh, on Zoom Cloud as you did before, please. You can you can record your OBS yeah. demo, but you won't have the. Oh, I see. Because that's using Zoom software. I mean, that's using the cloud. I guess. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yes. Use, okay. use Zoom resource. I was just a little worried about that. Okay, so we got that. So you know, I just wanted to get that stuff out of the way and. Um, I hope you guys all had a great break. I got a lot of TV watching in because <laughs> I was quarantined, man. <laughs> there is nothing. I mean, I drew and painted all like crazy, but I mean, way too much TV. I'm I'm so like, but we've been you know getting out there and doing stuff now. Okay. Um, gosh. <clears throat> <laughs> Let me see here now. I gotta. Um, is this it? Wait. Um, where's. Oh. Sorry, um, all this discussion and I don't even have my photo in front of me. Where? where? <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Okay. What day was Sunday? First, was it? That can't be it. Gosh. Okay. Forget it. I usually do it this way. All right. And there it is. Okay. That's weird. Okay. And so let's do a uh, value study. Rob, could you mute everybody just in case? Let's see. Is everybody and again, muted? Do you want everybody to turn off their video? Because I see. It's yeah, everybody should turn off their video and mute yourself. And then if you, you know, if you want to ask a question, um, yeah, I'm the only one talking. Yeah. And so that by, by taking off your video, I see a few people still have their video on. It's like George has his video on. Maybe he's not in there. There he goes. Um, yeah, you just go down where it says stop video on the left hand bottom corner usually. Rob, did you spotlight your video? Yeah, I, I did. Thank you. Can you guys watch out for me? Yes. My class. All right. OK. Now can we get down to the thing that I like to do? <laughs> OK. Uh, in fact, I'm just going to go, I'm going to put, let's draw myself a long rectangle there and let me go in here and I shall zoom into that a little bit okay I guess I could zoom in more huh how about that that's crazy now, now you can see a uh, every little freckle <laughs> okay and Okay, this background, let's just take it. See how this comes in? Try not to make this V part where the, where the mountains go. Try not to make it dead center. Try to pull it off to the side here a little bit, you know, something like that. It's just not usually a good, a good way to start something with a big V going dead center right away. And then let's come down to here at the base of the mountains and we have the the stream. Like that. Just this little sort of land right here. And I guess this one comes over to here, doesn't it? Kind of has a tree on it. And then we have this big white. And it almost goes straight across. The tree kind of goes straight across in the photo. I, I put it at an angle. And we also have this other tree here kind of doing this kind of thing. This one goes that way. And we have a couple over here doing something like that. And some stuff on the side, which we can include or not. We'll see. I do like this sort of diagonal in the foreground. And I wanted to study with this one. I, want, I wanted to sh just talk about how, you know, you have little, little logs and things under the water and things that are over the water. It's really fun. And I don't know why, but every time I, <laughs> every time I go out, looking at water, which is as much as I can. I try, I always look at, I always look at the reflections on the water and what's below the water and above, I don't know why. It's kind of like looking at a fire, fire like a fireplace in, in your fireplace. Um, something like that, tree over there. 
Probably because it's so random. Okay. We have, yeah, this this over here. I would try not to make this bunch of trees over here uh, as big as, as, and you know, or the same size as these trees over here. What do we have over here? We have Alicia, could, could you shut your video off or do you know how? Looks like your video is on. That way we could save a little bandwidth <laughs> Sorry, thanks. And then we have a, so maybe another tree over here. I just don't want to make them as, as heavy on both sides. So we'll see how we deal with that. And that's about all the drawing I, I do. You know, maybe what we'll do here is we could notice on the water that you see where it gets the darker green here, and that's the reflection of these trees. And the darker green over here is the reflection of these trees. The stuff in the middle, the light, is the reflection of the sky on the water. And you know, sometimes that can get all, that can kind of jumble you up. So let's get that out of the way. I find, you know what, hold on a second. There we go. And any dark color will do. You could use just Prussian blue if you like, or if you want to get something closer to black, if you mix your Prussian blue with, with uh, CAD red, you'll get a really nice Okay. And so that the, we'll just leave the sky like white. And for these mountains, let's just put something light over them first. I'm just going to do this. Pretty much all granite. And then that's, so then let's go over that with something darker for the trees. And what we're looking for with the trees isn't, try not to look at individual trees, but try to look at patterns of trees. So and how they lay out. So it's pretty dark. We have a few little goodies up there, a few over there. And I'm just gonna, got a little dark on me there, so I'm gonna take a little off. What I'm doing is I'm just, with a dry brush, I just took my water out of my brush and picking it up a little bit there. Okay. And then 
let's take that that a very very light color over the water even lighter in fact all over the whole water like this all the whole thing except don't paint over your 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 branches that are coming out into the light like I just did <laughs> try to leave them kind of bright now if you notice the value of the grass or this green stuff is the it's almost as bright as the sky being reflected into the water. It's really, really bright. So let's, let's put another value over that. Maybe a little bit darker, just like that. Oh, that looks really dark on the video. Wow, it's weird. Now let's see what happens when I put these dark trees, which are very dark up in here. You have to mix too much red in it, whatever. We're only concerned with the value here, so. You know, that's dark. See how that got lighter when I put the dark in there? So I think the, the camera just has a weird time adjusting. I had a sneaking suspicion of that. Darn camera. Okay. I'll leave a little bit. I'm going to leave a little more air out the side there. And this, this, tree over here, so it's a little further away. I'm going to make it just a tad lighter than this tree. This tree's a bit darker. And let's just, um, whoops. I was supposed to be my tree trunk. That got a little large on me. And then See how they, they're almost the same right now. I don't like that. I don't like them being the same on both sides. So not much we can do about that here, but we'll try to correct that in the, in the color rough. Just compositionally speaking. We do have some nice darks at the base of some of these things down here. Dark under here, very dark. Very high contrast under some of these little guys. Popping under there. I'm just hitting the little shadows under the things. A little shadow on there. I know there's a pretty dark reflection on the water there too. We're just thinking about values, that's all. Now, since I got this dark value right here, I don't want the reflections on my water, this darker part, not the sky part, but I don't want this to be as dark as that. So, I'm gonna lighten that up, there we go. And I'm just gonna horizontally pull those over just like that. So you get the little, and make try to make them as horizontal as you can, these strokes. Like that. We've got some, stuff in the water there, and then now it's coming out of the water here, so I'm gonna leave that just bright. And there's more reflections up here, huh? Okay. And then in the background, we have a couple of little streaks and that's where the wind's blowing out of the water back here or 
Now maybe just get a few ripples. So we just leave a few ripples in there. This back here is where dry brushing really, really can come in handy. So I like this value study. It's a little bright. I know we do have a neat little shadow up here in the foreground. You see that? Um, this is casting a nice little shadow. I think this could be a little bit darker. And then we have some very subtle shadows underneath the water. And you don't want those shadows to be as dark as the shadows above the water. See how high contrast they are above the water? Low contrast underneath the water. And that can give you kind of a neat little, I call it a duality. It's probably a too big of a word. All right, so just little dark things. Over here, they're so light, you can barely see them. There's a few little things under the water here. I mean, they're hardly, you almost need a magnifying glass to see those things. All right, so I like most everything in here, except I wish that, compositionally speaking, this and this, and I knew it from the photograph, that this and this equally, they don't look bad in the photograph though, but I just didn't want to get them weighted the same. And so I think I'm gonna really lighten up on probably this one. So let's go, I think what I'll do is I'll just move this up. Let's go to a color piece here. And I'll do that. And then let's for the mountains. Come down. There's our kind of that little rocky side there, and then it flattens out. And this land here. And so we've got this big blob of trees there. Something like that. And this one, I think I'm gonna to try to make this one lighter and less competitive. I don't even know if I want to take it all the way up. We'll just try stopping it there and see what happens. Okay, then we have this tree here. This I know it's weird not to not to look at all the bark and everything, but just see them as shapes. Like they look like bananas, right? You know, so just just see them as a really just a really basic shape. I think that's about it. Maybe a few little indications of where you want your reflections to be. Now let's go with a, a light, very light blue sky. I 
very light blue. You know what? While we have that on there, brush, why don't we just take that into the water? The water is a bit darker blue, though. So maybe a little bit more pigment. And I'm just going to put that over the whole thing. I don't think it'll... We're going to come over this with a green, and I don't think it'll be a problem. Let's just avoid the things that are outside of the water, like, you know, this branch here and this log there. Everything else, just paint it. That's how we're going to do the, the big one, too. And it's going to be fun. Okay. Now, I'm going to go with a grayer color on the mountains. And, and of course, these mountains are a bit, a little bit darker than the sky. And I think it should even be darker. Maybe. I'm just painting like the granite. Yeah. And let's come up with a kind of a blue green. I'm going to use Prussian blue and lemon yellow and a little touch of cad red. Can you see my palette? Hey, <laughs> isn't that nifty? I forgot. Oh yeah, because you know it always it always creeps up in the back of my head. I wish I could show them what I'm painting, but it's right down it's right down there. <laughs> I'm trying to work all this out. I mean, I've seen other ways of doing this on on YouTube, where some people just they they just do the whole thing. They don't zoom in or zoom out or anything. They just have their palette right over here, and they have their painting right here. And, I think it's okay. So we'll see if this works. Um, okay, so Prussian blue, lemon yellow. That gave me the blue green I wanted. And if you want to gray that green a little bit, if it's too, if it's too saturated, you just throw a little bit of just a touch of CAD red in there, and that'll neutralize it. When I mean neutralize, I just mean gray. When I say neutralize, I mean gray. I got all kinds of hairy things in my... Okay. All right, so that's a bit too light. I'm just going to use it to put in my shapes. Shapes of trees. And when I, when I do trees like this, I just think of masses of shapes rather than individual trees. Actually, that's not bad. Kind of uh, bluer shadows. So I, I just came in with something a little bit bluer. How about, I should have thrown that in here. Yeah, a little bluer. And if you notice the shadows are because the light is almost right. It's high noon or something like that. And um, the light's almost straight in front of you. It's a little off to the left side because we got cast shadows going to the right. But I'm going to. There we go. So most of the shadows are on the bottom of the tree and the right side of the tree. These trees back here. And there aren't a whole lot of shadows. But there are some cast shadows even on the granite, too. So I want to. All right, let's. How about since we're back here, let's go ahead and put in a tree trunk. You know, and it, that tree trunk. He's a bit on the warm side. I got some red that I'm mixing in to my other mixture, which was 
Prussian blue. I just mix them together. It's a dark, but it's a warm dark. And I've decided not as dark as this. So I'm gonna, that's a little too light, but that's okay. Something like that. And I do not want to get any darker than that. Remember that the camera reads this as really dark. Now when I put this other dark in, you'll see that that'll lighten up. And that's just an exposure thing. I, okay. Something like that. And I got a little fat with that. I'll, I'll maybe I'll take it right out. And then we have some heavy shadows underneath this. Going a little bit bluer. Just gonna glaze some blue right over that gray, so yeah. Oops, I got pretty dark on me. I'm gonna pick up some of that value-wise. Okay, now let's go for this green here. And how about uh, your cad yellow, Prussian blue. Let's give that a try. I like it. One little secret too is, and I've probably told you this many times, but if you add just a touch of, you know, I have this orange right here that I'm always tempted to use, but a little red, it doesn't matter, orange or red, because you know, the, 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 this already has yellow in it. So if you put a lot of red, that'll, that'll just cancel it. The orange won't cancel so much. Why? Because it's overwhelmed with so much yellow in it. So anyway, see what that does? This gives you a little bit of variation to the color. Your greens, pure greens don't usually work too well in nature. And then of course you go to the, the Huntington Library and look at the uh, desert gardens and they have these pure greens. You can't even make them that green. They break all the rules there. So I'll just, let that dry up and then we'll glaze a shadow over that. And we have a couple little minor trees if you want to throw those in. Um, this dark right here, I'm going to dig in to my Prussian blue. Maybe some magenta. How dark I can get this. See now, I put that dark down there and that one gets a little bit lighter. Weird. I don't know why that is. And at this point, we really don't care about rendering out that it looks like a pine tree or anything like that. What we care about is that we get a good color and a good value match there. Something like that. Could lighten that color a little bit, and maybe give this guy a couple. I just took the same color and I lightened it and put it over here. It, it's got a lot of parallel diagonal fronds, or what do you call them? Um, boughs, pine boughs, or whatever. But so what you do is every once in a while you just put a little diagonal in there like that, just to break it up. Or you'll end up with these lines that go, eh, 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 you know, just kind of every once in a while throwing a little like a diagonal in there, like that. See, I took that one in there. We'll do that more later. Okay, that's good. Something like that. And then let's come up with that reflection color. Interesting reflection color. I notice it gets really green over here and then. Over here, it gets kind of red as it comes at us. So really interesting. Um, I'm going to make that. I'm just going to take about Prussian blue, um, cad yellow, and some 
and some red. I got really red on me, but that, that's what I'm seeing up here in the foreground. Hmm. So I'll start up here in the foreground because it happened to be redder. Doesn't really matter where you start. Got this dark one under there. We'll come over that maybe a little darker later. And I know so on this side it gets a bit greener. Up here in the foreground it is a little bit redder. So that's interesting. We'll see. Some of that stuff. So I just use the same color. Now I'm going to add a little bit more of that green, which was just the Prussian blue and the CAD yellow. Same value, but a greener color. And you may, those horizontal strokes, because those waves come straight at you, they don't always come straight at you, but, you know, try not to get them too much of an angle or look like the whole thing's kind of going downhill. They do that. Maybe a drier brush would help you too here. I just dried off my brush a little bit. Now back here, it's so far away, you get a lot less what they call chroma to the color. So you're looking for the same color without so much saturation in it. And so what I'm going to do is I just, I add a little bit of water to my brush and then I wiped it off a touch. So I still have a little bit of that paint in there. And now I'm going to add some of this bluer stuff, this blue green that I had from the pine, the pine palm fronds which basically just all I'm looking to do is gray it. And I could have grayed that many different ways, but that, that color just happened to be there. And when I see something that's there that'll work, I just use it. So yeah, le less, less saturation there and even the the reflection in the water if you'll notice up here it's pretty light but as it gets toward you because you're looking down more into the water here you get less it gets actually darker so I probably could have done that earlier um, just gonna take a subtle glaze over this stuff in the foreground because I don't want it to read as strong as a sky reflection is over here. All right, take that right over those. Those are basically our colors. Give yourself some nice darks in here. Piece of this. That's dark there. A couple of these little good guys in there. We don't have to worry too much about those little details. And that's going to do it. Here's our color rough. Give yourself a hand. <laughs> okay. So let me zoom this out here. Um, So Rob, we're doing this obviously portrait. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, this is about the best I can do. I, I got a white board here. And let's see what I can do here. I got this white board just to try to make it a little bit nicer. So you didn't see my all my little odds and ends. <laughs> there we go. I got a whole bunch of them. All right. And I could tape this down. Um, I didn't want to tape it down because, you know, sometimes when I get these things wet, I need to lift them up and move them around a little bit. So I need the, maybe I'll work that out someday, but okay. Let's get back to my photograph here. Okay. And then so let's, I'll give myself a lot more sky, huh? I'll, I'll draw a little darker for you. Like that. And if you want to, you can you can decide where you want your... I don't think it's really all that necessary to draw in where you want your trees to be on the background mountain, but it's okay, just little indications. There's just so many of them. Some people do a big grouping and they'll they'll do something like this. They'll just actually kind of box in all their trees like this. Um, it's okay to do that. It, it can get looking boxy. If you like the cubist look, then go for it. You know I do. But most of the time I just paint them in. I don't even, <clears throat> okay, now let's say the base of my mountain's about here, and it comes into, out there, and then we have the land, and we have some little loggy things with little goodies on them. All right. Got a big tree there. I just want to know about what size. So I just draw it in like that. Just looking for a size, something like that, about in there. I just put in a, a few little diagonals because I really want those things going down. Maybe these are going down this way. And another diagonal here. With it's got a little stick to it. And we've got another one here. You could even draw a little line where the water meets the dry part of the log, if you like. Totally okay. Honestly, I, I don't do much more drawing in this big one than I do in the small one. I do that all the time too. I think of things to relate, like I said, that banana shape. Um, I think it's a good idea to do that. If you see something go, well, you know, that looks like one of these, you know, or something. Anything that can help you. I'm gonna draw this reflection in the water approximately there. Um, we do have a few little shadows in the water there. We have a little branch coming like out of the water here. 
And if you want to throw in some of these little odds and ends here on the side, these will be fine. Could leave them out. I think they're nice in there, though. Oh. Uh, <clears throat> some of these little reflections kind of come, if you'll notice, it kind of comes straight, straight down because it's this tree right up here reflecting down into the water here. And you know, there are little pieces of sky coming through there, so I do mine a little bit different. So I certainly could do something like that and have a little, like a little piece of sky, like that sky right there coming in through here, if you like. That can get all too confusing, though. Let me keep that, keep that simple. OK. And then this tree right here cast shadow, I mean, cast reflections down into the water. And so they do something like that. So we just have this opening that goes from dark to light. Remember, one of the reasons you're not seeing as much reflection down here is because you're looking down into the water, whereas the more you look toward the horizon, you're looking more across the water and you're catching more of a reflection. So you're looking down into the water. There's still a little bit of reflection there of the sky, but over here a much stronger reflection because you're looking more across the water. It's weird. But it is definitely something to think about. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's do that light blue sky, um, like so. I, I'll leave that blue up to you. It's fine. I'm just going to use like an ultramarine or maybe a cobalt might be good. I got pretty gray on me. So I'm going to just wipe that off. Probably some stuff left over in my brush. I didn't wash it out good enough. There we go. A little bluer. It certainly doesn't matter if a little bit of that crosses over into your mountain because it's all got blue in it back there. See how light my value is? That's white and that's, wow. I could go a little darker, I think. There. I like to just let it float around like that. It's watercolorish. <clears throat> so now, for this gray we're going to put on the mountain, we're going to just take the Prussian blue, add a little red, makes a nice gray. Let's see what that looks like. Kind of a blue gray. If you want a little bit warmer, just add a little more. There we go. You put that over the whole thing. Right over the whole mountain. Don't worry about the trees because they're in silhouette. Now we could have wet, we could have done this wet into wet too. We kind of are, really, right? The, the sky's running into this. You may get some stuff running all over the place. I'm seeing little yellows in the mountain too. Kind of purple granite, yellow granite. Feel free to tag a little color in there. So what I love to do while it's wet, and while it's all wet like this, just tag little bits of color here and there. And if you if you don't see it there and you want it there, put it in. 
know, grays can get kind of kind of boring. So maybe little variations in color might be nice. Okay. And while that's still wet into wet, let's make up a, a bluish green. Again, with the Prussian blue and the CAD yellow. Let's see how this looks. Because I want it to feel far away. So I'm really pushing the blue in it. And the fact, see the soft, the wet into wet's making it all soft edged? That's good. Because that makes it feel, feel far away too. And see how I'm throwing my grouping on there and just use vertical strokes like this. Like that. So you look good. You'll get like treetops. You could even make these ones back here bluer if you like. Knock yourself out. Let's see. Let me do it. I'm going to get even bluer. This guy, yeah. Maybe not that dark though. Well, I think that looks pretty good. It's starting to tack up a little bit, so I'm going to start getting harder edges. So I'm going to really. There we go. Now I'm going to get a little bit greener up here in the foreground. Again, vertical strokes. And I'm thinking about grouping them, you know? So I get these groupings. But occasionally, you want some that are far apart, too, so you can one all by themselves, like that. Otherwise, it gets too dense, like me. <laughs> no. um, Maybe a little bit out here, since we opened that up a little bit. So that, that got dry on me, so I'm getting a, a drier edge. If that's too dry, just take a little water, melt down that edge a little bit. Most of that's covered up anyway. But instantly feels far away, I love that. Mm. I don't want to pick on it too much. There we go. That's enough. You're going to kill it, Rob. Don't over watercolor it. OK. We'll let that dry up a little bit now. These, the, the bottoms look maybe like they're floating. I'll wait. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it would be a good idea to put the shadows in now. Let's go ahead and do that. I was going to wait for a little bit more control, but I think maybe some shadows, and they're kind of going from the left to the right, kind of downhill like this. See, that's what I was trying to avoid, these hard edges, but I'll come back and soften them up. Back here, we don't get much shadows. Yeah. So if, you, if you're getting hard edges, just take a little, just a little touch of water, just, just water. I'm softening that edge. So what I'm trying to do with this background, unlike the photo, which you know, we'll, we'll put everything in focus, not all the time, but in this case it did. Um, I'm trying to just soften the edge to, to loosen up the focus. So it, it functions as a nice background, and that, that's all I wanted out of it. Oh, well, that's checking up a little bit. How about we take some of that sky color and go over the water with it? And I'm going to go right over my reflections, too. So let's see. Just that sky color. I'm going to go right over. Don't worry about this stuff over here, because you 
you're just gonna put reflections right over it. So. Just like that. Right next to my big diagonal. I'm gonna lighten that up a little bit. Just adding water. And this will end up looking like the sky coming through the trees right in here. Go ahead and leave all those little white spots too. We love those. Oh yeah. Now, you ever notice it takes a few minutes just to, just to loosen up and get into it? Starting to find my stride here now. Okay. Um, yeah, over here, just all the stuff that's, that's in light though, that's really, it's above the water, just avoid that. Oops, I went right over it. <laughs> I told you to avoid it. And so, see, I did that because I need to show you how to correct your mistakes, see? <laughs> and that's how you do it. You make a mistake, whoops, just take your, and, and there you go. Make sure you say whoops though. It's the watercolor whoops. Okay, now we have this, yeah, we have this stuff, all of this, I'm going right over the reflection here, that dark reflection, this one. I'm just painting this guy right over because I do see a subtle blue tinge to all this, even though you're looking straight down into it. There is some, there's some reflection on it. And all this stuff over here, I'm just gonna leave, I'll put some brush on that. That wasn't a pun, by the way. Put some brush on that. Oh God, I'm sorry. because I would never do that. Okay. Kind of underpainting all this stuff in a way. A lot of this blue will come out. Let's go with this big green batch here. And Prussian blue, cad yellow, and a touch of cad red. Prussian blue, cad yellow, lots of cad yellow, and just a touch of red. Or orange, whatever. If you have an orange, throw an orange in there. It's the same thing, really. All an orange is is a lesser red. That's all it is. And I can see it got a little red on me. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get yellow in that thing. Wow, that, that got really... Now that's interesting. I'm looking up at the screen and that's a very red, it's almost orange up there, whereas I put this down very yellow. Interesting. That's a better yellow. And let's just feed a little bit of that Prussian blue into it. You can just paint right over these trees here because they're dark. See how, how much you can get away with in all this stuff? Right now, we're, we're just keeping it loose. And this big old painting that looks really kind of complex it's not. 
I think I want a little more green in here, so I'm going to just throw a little bit more of my Prussian blue. Just tag little green areas here and there. Yeah. And that really, you see, the, 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 the saturation of this color really jumps forward. It's the most saturated color in the whole thing, I would say. It doesn't have to be. You certainly can throw some more saturated things up here in the foreground. And then there's the argument of whether maybe we should add a little bit of um, reds and oranges to this, or red, reds and, you see, uh, like reds and violets or something like that to that, to, to gray it if you wanted to. I don't really want to, but, you know, it, let's say, just take a little here and there if it gets too saturated. And... I miss some of my water. Okay. Now, now let's. I'm going to throw this lighter tree in first, using that um, Prussian blue and Cad red. So, yeah, that's not bad. Something like that. These these branches sort of go out to the side, and then you don't really see too much of them. So I'm just going to pull a few of them out like this. That's it. There's another little one off to the side here. I wouldn't mind putting a little diagonal in there. And then uh, Prussian blue, cad yellow, and the red again. If you add a little more Prussian blue to it, there would be a blue or green feeling, hopefully, yeah, feeling a little further away. Now that's the wet look right there. See, uh, when I put it on really wet, you get that kind of look, and, and there's nothing wrong with it. I like it, kind of hard edged and everything. That's a nice look. And then you could dry your brush off and get more of this kind of look, where you're, well, I, I need a little bit more paint. The dry brushy look. Really, kind of just comes down to your own taste. Um, like I say, you see, see how they get really parallel. So try to avoid too much parallel by throwing in something every once in a while, like this, like a little diagonal. See that little diagonal? So it just kind of breaks it all up. You get these really parallel things. I'm trying to back off on these values. And there certainly are little, little charming, little, little bushy things at the bottom, little, little babies, baby trees starting off there. This all casts a big shadow down below.
we can just throw I just used uh, pure ultramarine blue for that and take that shadow right into the water a little bit there we go and even in the background here touching Sometimes when I have the ends of my trees like just stopping like that, I mean, we'll probably come back and hit a little dark in there later, but I, I'll, I'll just hit something a little bit dark in there. See what that does? Just kind of grounds it a little bit. Just a little bit darker. I notice I, I probably told you all before that sometimes some of the boughs come straight at you and these all look like they're off to the sides. So once in a while, just, just kind of take, take one like there's a bow kind of coming at you and do this kind of thing. That's where the diagonals come from, by the way, when you have a little, yeah. See? That more will begin to feel like a bow coming more at you. It'll, it'll go across. And I don't want to make too big of a deal out of it. I think, I think that's doing the trick right there. Maybe I'll come back and play with it later. And uh, I want to start off with this tree over here now. That's a, I would suggest dry brushing this, although you could do the hard, you know, the wet look with really hard edges like I did on some of these. And I, it, it does look good too. But I'm going to do the dry brush look. And it does have a big... Um, tree trunk in it. So again with the Prussian blue and the something like that. And I, I don't even see any branches. You could if you want to. What, what you could do is um, just throw yourself down a few directional strokes like this. Just letting yourself know which which direction some of them are going. And these just do all kinds of things. So that just kind of gets me into it right there. Knowing that I'm going to paint right over the whole thing, but a lot of that looks pretty neat, all sparse like that. So then with the Prussian blue, the cad yellow, I would suggest lots of Prussian blue in this one. And of course, red. Um, working pretty dry too. I mean, look at the end of my brush. I didn't even touch it yet, and it's already very dry. So I just put that in and that's a little too dry, maybe. You just find your little medium, what works for you. And mine looks pretty red. I'm going to blue it down. I'm going to throw some ultramarine in there. Notice I just kind of pull, pull out. See, it's just, it's just stroke like this. And the more delicate your touch, the more um, you'll get this scumbly kind of edge. So, and see, I like that one that's kind of pointing down because every once in a while you get a broken one and they look great and they look natural so what you want to try to avoid doing is the same stroke over and over but I have this idea in my head that I'm just sort of kind of pulling out pulling pulling out like outward outward Trying to avoid that same stroke though. There we go. We got the darker tree. I think that works better. So they're not competing with each other. Even though we have two little guys over here, they're almost the same. We can break that up by putting, I, I noticed there's a couple over here. 
I'm going to keep that one kind of a broken stroke. Like that. Just a little bit. Maybe come back with some green. Basically, if you just add a little yellow to the mixture you, you did, we just made for the tree. It's the same, but let's see. So the hope there is that, you know, this as a grouping of trees kind of, I don't know what it is we about people though. We, we want to make this side exactly the same as next side. I don't know why we do that. But try to avoid doing that. You'll usually find that it makes for a more successful painting. Not always though, I've done it and been real happy with the painting. Okay, we got a nice little shadow over here too. Again, you know, I, I think just glazing, um, you could come up with a darker version of this color, but see, if you just glaze ultramarine blue over it, you'll get a dark color and you'll get, you'll, it'll have a little bit of saturation to the color instead of just this dark gray. That's just, so all I did was put ultramarine over that, but see, it doesn't look like ultramarine because you're seeing through it to the other colors underneath it. So I want to do it here too. And this whole shore has bits of shadow and that will just happen. You see mine, say mine looks really kind of razor sharp as it goes up into the brush. brush. You could just kind of dry brush that edge a little bit. Just, just, you know, keep it random and there we go. And, and if you like that style, we have sharp edges everywhere, then go for it. I like it too. Just filling a little white over there. <laughs> okay. Now, um, let's go for some reflections. So let's make up that, that color. That reflects into this. So what's happening here is that you're not only seeing a reflection of the trees in the water, but you're also seeing, you're also seeing through the water into the bottom, the dirt at the bottom, which also has probably moss and algae and whatever in it to it. So that's why you get these, these maybe some unexpected colors in the water. It's not that the water itself, the, actually the water itself here is probably very clear. But you get the, the scum and this is a pretty shallow, uh, probably a river, I think it's a river. Yeah. Okay. So again, I've got this color. I use Prussian blue and yellow. It gave me that greener color that we have up over here. Yeah. Maybe a little more red in it. Yeah. I could see that a little bit darker. Knowing that it's gonna dry a little bit lighter. So a lot of times if I get it just right when I paint it, I know that I gotta get a little bit darker. Again with the horizontal strokes, right? Oh, this is so fun. Just barely touching it. I mean, for some of those little ripples, see? Just 
just and then I think when we get back here we'll um, we'll make that a little bit bluer I take that color up over here and go a little bit redder with it now add a little more of the cad red in there I think I got a lot more let's see how this looks oh that worked pretty good okay now we do have this little crack in between these two trees here that I put it so I want to just leave an opening of water uh, oops, water droplets uh, I'm gonna leave a little bit of an opening in the trees through there Oops. Going around the tree that's above the water. And then Real horizontal strokes. Now uh, I'm I'm throwing in that reflection from this log up here. It reflects down into the water. I'm gonna throw that in there. Got a little bit of this one in there. Could be a little bit of that in there. What else? Nothing in there. We've got this dark thing underneath, which I'll probably have to hit it darker again. Again, I'm throwing it in. I know it looks like a mirror. I'm throwing my. I'm still putting mine in with horizontal strokes because I want it to feel kind of ripply, a little bit ripply. Believe it or not. <laughs> God, I'm sorry. Um, and. Some little good fellas down there. They get pretty red down here too. And I just put them down with real horizontal strokes. <clears throat> now we'll glaze all this again with some more red to make you feel like we're looking more down deep into the water a little bit later. Again, I want to come back into the water way back here and, and add a little more blue to that. Probably ultramarine blue, I think. Just want it grayer and blue, like a blue grayer. Maybe a little more blue than that. So it feels further away. So it's the same reflection, but further away. And maybe even lighter than what I'm doing it. I got a good technique for making it lighter. I just take my rag and go. Whoosh, whoosh. <laughs> you can also add more water. If you have more discipline. And there is some logs and stuff sticking out of the water. I guess I could have put those in. Maybe. I don't really see why I should. Um, yeah. What I'm doing here is just throwing a little bit of reflection from this bush down into the water. So I'm adding a little bit more of this more saturated color. And then what we'll do is we'll smack a couple of darks in there, see? See him? 
You gotta smack those darks. Cool. Okay. Now let's add some shadows to our logs above the surface of the water. Because you know what? The, the, the light part of them, it's, it's almost white. Really. I would leave it white. And then later on, if it's too stark, we'll just put very, 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 very subtle glazes on it. But I mean, just leave, just leave the light part white. And if you'll notice, the shadow underneath the log is a little darker than the reflection. See, if you compare them. So that's a good way to assess your values is make comparisons like that. And that's what I do like every single time I like mix a color almost. I'm seeing it as a little warmer. Certainly could argue that's cooler. Might be a good idea to make that cooler. Okay, let's make that cooler. Prussian blue, red. I know I go to that a lot, don't I? You certainly could use, let's try um, ultramarine blue and cad red. That's going to make a violet, but I think that'll be nice. See, the Prussian blue will also make a violet. It'll just be a lot grayer, but I think the, the, it's kind of nice to see a more colorful color on there. There's some reflected light in under there, too, if you... If you feel so inclined, I mean, I'm seeing a little orangey reflected light in there too. If, if I can show you a trick on how I do that, but you got to be quick. Here's what I do: throw it in there like that, and then um, take the yellow and red. While it's still wet, and hit that reflected light back in there. See, give it a little time. See, it's working its way in there. It'll get lighter. It's a secret. I can't show you those secrets until I. I do that in people's faces all the time. Oh, there's kind of dead shadow, and I throw some reflected light in there, and boom! Just livens the whole thing up. It's my favorite. Can you tell? You know, I have I have a color on my brush. Maybe... Why not put a couple streaks in this wood? Maybe um, a little darker, a little redder, maybe. Like that. If you like, some dark things happening in the wood too. I painted right over my darn little piece of wood right there. Oh, well. some dark ones in there. Oh, I forgot to put shadows on these guys. Now I do have kind of a hard edge on this big one, and since it's such a big deal in the piece, I'm going to take a little water along that edge. You know, in other words, as the light goes into the shadow, it's, I, I made it really drastic. And it, it is kind of drastic, but if you notice, it has kind of a soft edge. So just a little water will loosen that edge up, give us kind of a nice little, more of a rounder log. Feels a little more square, the, the harder you make that edge. Now I'm going to come under here now and, and start throwing in some of these shadows. Same shadow color. By the way, this, this log casts a shadow over and around this. See it? See it? It goes around this log underneath. That is kind of a big deal because it really makes it feel like it's on top of it. And we'll want to smack a really good dark underneath there too. I 
got this one. These guys in there. Couple of darks in there. We got dark stuff in there. Um, right, this one goes around and down and into the water. Yeah, this one casts that shadow down below. And then this, this one casts a little bit of a shadow over the one below it. See these neat little shadows on there? He kind of blue too. I probably should have used something bluer. All right. Now here's something. You notice how contrasty these shadows are up above the surface. And I'm not actually even making them contrasty enough. They're more like this. They're really dark. Um, not everywhere, but there are some definitely some darks. But look at the shadows of the logs that are underneath the water. Very low contrast, OK? We'll hit some of those in a little bit. But I want to make sure I hit all these dark ones. I have a little bit of one right here. And a couple little goodies in here. But we'll make sure when we hit our shadows on the stuff below the water that they're much lower contrast. And that'll. That'll give us the above and below look. All right, let's see what we got here. Now there's definitely all kinds of more details we could put into this, and I don't have time. I don't even know if I'd put them in anyway. Because I'm not a detail person, right? I'm a broad brusher. <laughs> okay. I, I do want to hit a couple of little scruffy things along here on the side, and they're very, very light, kind of sagey color, whatever you like, but something light and I don't got, got a little yellow on me, but I don't mind that. I'm gonna throw a little bit of that sage. I happen to have some blue green. If you if you have an extra color. Go ahead and use it. Um, that's kind of nice. You can make it easily. That's what I call a lazy color, because I can easily make that color out of Prussian blue and lemon yellow. So it's pretty much the same color. And we could hit. Just a couple of little things in there. They've got some light branches. I don't have white. But why not put a dark branch on there? I don't know. We'll see. Let's test it out and see if it works. I like it. Maybe I'll try some light ones there, too. I like overlapping, so I'll take a one. I'll take a branch kind of overlapping like this. Okay. Just, just, just for a little, little depth. That's all. That's all. And since I have this nice darky on my brush, why not hit it at the base of some of these logs in there? Um, like I told you earlier, we come back later and hit some little darks. A little trick to getting this to lay down too. Hit these, hit these darks at the base of this landmass. Very horizontal. Horizontal like that. Why? Because you have, really, you have, you know, one land mass, another mass, another mass, another mass. So you'll get a little bit of a feeling of perspective. If you hit those down, kind of horizontally. I have stuff with a little nice, nice little dark over there. There's my, my other log here. Do whatever you like with it. 
I'm just gonna keep it very, very basic. You know, oftentimes when I have extra stuff on my brush, I'll say, you know, I could probably use a little bit of something in here. You know, a little couple of ditties in there. And that's how you move on a painting really fast because you're doing, you know, you have a color that you can see you can use somewhere else. You're not always having to mix a new color every time. And that chops your time in half. That turns what used to, used to take you two hours into 20 minutes. And it's not all about speed. I'm not really into speed per se, but I happen to be pretty impatient person <laughs> sometimes. When it comes to painting, I want to get that thing going. And um, Plus, I think, you know, working as a commercial artist did do something to me. Makes you kind of um, the, the attitude in, in commercial art usually is, I know I could probably render the heck out of this, but it's looking pretty darn good. And that's good for me. That's good enough for me. I do see a couple of other darks down here. I'm going to hit a couple of little darks at the base of this. I miss those. Some scruffy things. I like, when I have light behind a silhouette like this, I like to throw things, other little silhouettes over it like that. Maybe this one could be a little darker. It's starting to take shape. Okay. Now. Okay. <clears throat> let's let's make a value that's um and I was going to go darker with this one too. Um that's lighter than these shadows are up here. And we're going to put them under the water. So these are the shadows of the things under the water. You know, you don't have to be all that specific about them. I mean, some people get really carried away. You can see every little molecule of things under there. What we're looking for is just some generally, some very basic shadows. So that's a little too dark, what I just put on there. So I'm going to lift that off. That's about the value I'm looking for. Something very light. Got this little, there we go. Yeah. We have a couple of little logs under the water here. See, the thing is, you can always come back and make them a little bit darker. I did, I just remembered one thing I forgot to tell you. Um, let's, let's lay off this area up, up in here first. Why don't we, we'll start putting in our shadows back here while Let's, we'll put a glaze over this first. And while this is drying, we'll work on these shadows up here and then it should be fine up and down here. So I'm, I'm sorry about that. I, I remembered I was supposed to put a glaze over all this to make it redder so we look like we're feeling, like we're looking down into the water. So I'm gonna go with um, the red, the Prussian blue, and the cad yellow. Cad red, cad blue, cad blue? No. I don't know of a cat blue. Is there a cat blue? Probably is somewhere. Cat yellow, cat red. And um, the reason I'm using the Prussian blue instead of the ultramarine um, okay. Just because it's a little it'll, it'll make it a touch grayer. I don't want too much I want that a little bit redder. See, I throw it down there and then I dial it in. And I need that to be not as dark. So I'm adding water as well. See, I went right over this, right over all my sky. There we go. 
Yeah. Sorry, Rob, that was Prussian blue and what? Cad red and cad yellow. Yeah. And you know, you could get carried away and please do. Add a little yellow or a little red in there, little hints of thing, little, little touches of yellow. You know, I'll get a little more saturated here and there and just tag stuff around. Let the watercolor do the rest of the work. Now that is very bright in there. So I think we need to um, take a little bit of this color over that, but much less. Let's see what. Yeah, very. I just want to. I just want to take the edge off this color. It's too bright. You see, see how the whites stand out on the log more? Now that I put that value in there? There we go. That really makes the log stand out. If it's too much, you can always just take a damp brush and watch. Just take it off. It's not taking it all off. I'm just taking a damp brush. There we go. There we go. I'll wait for you guys a little bit and just gonna put a couple little ditties into my little log over there. Okay. Come back, correct a little darks. There's always something. You know, when I do these demos for you guys, I don't really have time to nuance everything, but I usually, when I'm on my own, I'll play with them a bit. Okay. Now, let's go for some of these little dark shadows and they're only, they're just very subtly dark back there. They might not even be that dark. I'm thinking that's gonna dry a little bit lighter. Yeah, it is. So, uh, remember when I gave you that demonstration? I think I saw it over here. Didn't I? About how land lays down. Uh, oh, it was in this one. Remember when we did this painting? And how it gets flatter back here, and then as it comes at you, it gets more, you know, more zigzaggy. See the Z there? Whereas this Z right here, back here, would be much more compressed. So the same thing is back here. Same thing. It's, it's like that with everything. It's not just, it's, and it's not only the way land lays down, it's the way everything lays down. So if these are laying on a flat surface back here, they're gonna be more zigzaggy and closer together like that. And I can see little logs coming at us. So you can see a lot more of the detail in the reflection because the sky isn't bleaching it out. And you can see some very subtle shadows in here, but I want to go way lighter with our values. And then you could, you could get in here and really render out some of these rocks and things if you like, or you could just leave them. I mean, people can put that together. I don't know why everything has to be spelled out. But like, for instance, I see a log coming 
it's going from this part into the reflection. So I'm going to put that kind of dark in there, maybe even darker. Put a little shadow in there. And then I'm going to make it lighter as it's coming out into here. I'll show you. Let's just do all these. All of these shadows in here. Why? Because I've already got it on my brush. I might as well use it. The cool thing about this is um, you don't have to be a copyist all the time. Once you understand some principles, you can really pick and choose what you want to put in. Or maybe if you see something that you, you'll think, well, my gosh, it needs a branch there. You just put it in. You're not a slave to what you're looking at, in, in other words. All right, so we have this shadow underneath the water down here. I'm going to throw a little ultramarine blue in there. I haven't seen some blue in that shadow down here. And then we have some sort of other branch going in here. Little rock shadows. And this is a, something really to look at John Singer Sargent of the way he handles this kind of thing. Uh, it's It's... He'll just kind of slash them in there, and they look great. And they feel really abstract. And then they also feel, you know, pretty realistic because he gets his values. That's a little dark. I think I might want to lighten that up just a little bit. So I add a little bit of water and stamp it. There we go. And if it's not enough, I'll come back and smack it again. Something really dark at the base of that. Kind of reminds us that this is above water when you really hit a dark in there. And then you come in with these little shadows underneath it. See how it's starting to look kind of glassy? Like, like when you look over water? I'm telling you. It's fun. It's satisfying. It's like, you know, making something good to eat. Okay, we got these shadows up here in the foreground, and let's see how dark I am. A little, maybe a little dark. I just added a little bit of water. This really light value. Um, earlier, I said I was going to continue this one out into here. Look at that. See? Very subtle. And if we have to hit them again, we will. But I'd rather start off light just to get that glassy. But well, one of the one of the tricks to this, one of the things that will really give you that, that feeling is that you're going, here's the shadow in, the, in this light part of the reflection, excuse me, and then it goes into here, into the dark part of the reflection. And it kind of gives you that little trick. Watch, watch I'll do it here. I'll, I'll take a little shadow and I'll put it in there. And then I'll lighten it up. And you get that feeling, right? It goes from dark, or 
the darker part to the lighter part. And you get all these do all these strange like these are above the water, these are below the water, these are you know in that part of the reflection, these are in that part of the reflection. They get a little more detail over here. I mean, if you can organize it like we just did, it's it's a really satisfying thing to paint and you know, your, your understanding, it's sort of a, an analysis in a way, and it's also a, this, just, I don't know. I think most people are like me in the sense that when they look at water, I don't know what it is, man, it just mesmerizes me. Um, and this is what, you know, artists do is we figure out what, why it's mesmerizing us, you know? And then we, we do the art part, which is playing with it. It's one thing to know the science, because there's a lot of science here, but it's another thing to also just play with it and do what you want with it, instead of slaving over it, actually saying, you know, I want to log over there, and I know what it should do, so I'll do this, and then it works. Or most of the time. That's very bright. There's some, yeah, some of my shadows lightened up on me, so it looks like I need to hit them a little bit darker in there. And you know, it's watercolor. See, I thought the, I thought put, I thought I put these in a little too dark. Well, we need to come back and just hit a couple. And just just remember the rule is try to make try not to make anything under the water as far as the darks go try not to make any of those as dark as this as the shadows are above the water here's a good example right here the log you can see the shadow of the log right there it's really dark and then you can see the shadow underneath the log which is really light because one's above the water and one's below the water it's It's nuts. This is why I said you might as well just leave it white. And so these are these these are the times why, you know, I um you know I wouldn't mind seeing. A little more blue in my in my reflections, and I hope I don't kill this. But I'm wanting a little more. Is that going to do it? Is that going to kill it? I like that. We're talking about that wasn't even a that wasn't a like on a value scale from one to ten that was about one quarter of a value. You're only trying to just. I'm gonna take some of that blue in here too. I'm gonna stage it a little bit by making it a little darker around here on the bottom. Oh, that's neat. Kind of ripply looking, huh? Cool. Maybe I'll leave a couple of those little highlights in there. Same here. So those those are the things that I'll, I might spend. Uh, you know, I, I might actually leave it alone for a while and then come back to it and work on things like that. Subtle little shadows in this log. Okay. And 
we're getting close to that that time. My that got dark. Oh, well, sign it bold, right? Kind of wet in the wet there, too, I like. I like that. So these are the times where I might dial, try to dial things in. You know, if you wanted the sky more blue, certainly could throw a little more blue in there. See? You see what? Yeah. So that works. Don't like it, I'll take it right out. And I just put it like in, like that in there because who knows, maybe there could be some subtle soft clouds or something. Shadows. Anything you like at this point. Some of those yellows in the water are really. I wouldn't mind hitting something a little stronger in there. Maybe even knowing that's going to dry much grayer. So you see what I mean? I'm just making adjustments, adjusting saturation, value, um, any anything that needs to be adjusted. And this is also a really good time just to go have lunch or something. You know, go go away for a while come back and with a fresher look and things will stand out. I like to come back with a with a little notepad, you know. I I use like a note notepad or like a post-it notes or something. And I just I'll sit there and make make little notes and just cross them off. Just cross them off. Post-it notes too. I I use those mostly on my my paintings that are up on the wall. Compulsive note, note taker, because I can't remember anything. <laughs> I have a horrible—I don't know what it is about my memory, but horrible memory. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let's see now. Let's see what we got in the. We've already got five emails. Okay, and let me screen share. Huh. It's not letting me, there we go. We're screen sharing. Let's see what Charlotte. Oh, I had to go to work. Oh, okay. Okay, that's not my camera. It's a little blurry. Her photo. <clears throat> Looks like she has a little note. Note there it says that she had to go to work. So I didn't know she worked. Okay. So Charlotte, nice, nice abstract. You got the feeling, the movement of the water. That absolutely feels like waters and reflections. You know, I mean, there's more literal depictions and then there's more, more definitely more abstract. And she really cropped into the foreground. That's interesting because I, I, you know, that, that definitely pulled me into the piece. So. Beautiful, beautiful colors, love the abstraction. Um, my favorite area is this. Let me get a little, whoops. Uh, this area, probably because of all the contrast. 
she, she's got that big sort of Z pattern going on there. That's fun. Very watercolorish too. Very much in the spirit of watercolor. And she's not afraid to hit in a few opaques. Just, just so you know, these might not even be gouache that she's using here. I, I bet you they're not. But the cad red and the cad yellow can be very opaque. So even though you're not using gouache, you could still be doing something that would be considered a gouache. OK, Jane, nice work. It's got a nice style to it. Now, this is what I was talking about earlier when I said, um, see, she uses a lot, of, a lot of water with her paint because you notice all the hard edges. So every time she puts down a color, it feels like a puddle. And that's, you know, there's some great, great, great painters. Like Maurice Prantergrast is one of them that use these, this, this more of a puddly approach. <clears throat> and I love it. Thank you. Uh, what what kind of paper are you working on? Um, it's just a little. It's a, not a very big pad. What is it? It's arches. Oh, okay. It's an tablet. But it's not hot press. No, no. Oh no. Okay, you're using. I think it's maybe, maybe more water than I thought. <laughs> <clears throat> to get it to puddle up like that. i You know, the hardest part is what we worked on a lot and it's under the water and over the water yeah and maybe maybe back here uh let me see if i can use a red um if you hit a couple more subtle darker values like in here and in here a couple mm -hmm. more so it really feels like i'm noticing mine light and white i i probably need to come back and hit mine too um Put a couple more in there, I think. Right. That's, we'll give you that. that it's you definitely smudgy. got it up here in the front, though. You definitely got it up there. That's that's the main one. <clears throat> so. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I've I've tried underwater before, but I just say, oh, that's too hard. I couldn't possibly, you know, yeah. it, it, so much going on. Yeah, painting a watercolor while you're underwater is not, not, not maybe not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> if somebody could do it, I want, I really want to see that. Now that's something I've never seen done. I'm going to have to do it now. <laughs> okay. I love the way you master trees in the background. See, you're more concerned with the shape than you are with rendering individual trees, and that's that's the only point I was trying to get across. See, mm -hmm. when you when you paint like that, you can paint anything. It doesn't matter what you paint. You're you're kind of free. So um Yeah, there's nothing wrong with your painting at all. I guess I guess if I were gonna say something, see how this is straight across? Yeah. I I would have maybe gone right. a little more of an angle with it. Well, I I, I still started, wouldn't go over it. But. Yeah, I the only reason why is because it, it it will tend to sometimes divide divide the painting. It's not really doing it okay. though. One little trick, if it feels weird to you, one little trick that you can do is take some of this brush over it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'll and, um, break it. You could even throw a little cast shadow, you know, over parts of it. Just, just to give us the feeling. Oh, yeah, this is. It's not a dividing line. It's a. It's. It's a peak. You know, it'll bring us back to reality. That one, it doesn't do that to me. But if it, if it starts feeling that way to you, just, I do that all the time. I, I overlap and I drop shadows. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Mm -hmm. Clear my drawings. Okay. All right. Nice composition. We had uh, Luis, Luisa. Yes. Yeah. And I like Jane's a lot. Yeah. 
Okay. Really like what you know. This is this feels very Chinese with all of this wet into wet. So they're, they're masters at getting atmosphere. Really getting the atmosphere in there. So now, what? Uh, how about we all turn off our videos, okay? Except you know you don't have when you're talking to me. You go ahead. But if uh, that might help us with the bandwidth. But you know, if you want to talk to me without the video too, it doesn't matter. I, I don't mind. But anyway, uh, one, one thing I would like to do is with this one is maybe okay. Um, where is it? Okay. So I, I would hit some darker shadows, especially on your trees that are coming out of the water. Those are the darkest, some of the darkest values in the whole piece. So I would really come back and, and that's nice. I mean, you know. Um, right, I sort of. Watercolor and things are light in the beginning. So sometimes we have to hit those. I sort of stopped and sent it to you. I, I consider it not finished because what happens to me all the time, especially with working on this water is eventually it gets so it looks so overworked mm -hmm. and so it's a yeah it's a conundrum for me because the more i try to darken things and so on then then it loses the freshness uh -huh. and it doesn't do that when you do it <laughs> i know i've done that in so many paintings that were, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Right. I will tell you that the more paintings you do, you know what happens? You, you, you micro solve all these problems for years. There's just, you know, there's little problems that you're constantly solving and then you just find a way. You just find what works for you. And it's, it is the sum total of doing a lot of paintings. <laughs> Okay. To, uh, when I was at Art Center, teachers would just say to me, you, you know, you, you're okay. You just need more mileage. You got to yeah. do. We need you to do. I remember Vern Wilson said to me, um, um, I want you to do 100 master copies of uh, uh, drawings, master <laughs> drawing copies. Right. And he goes, and I, I need you to have that done, you know, in, in about a month. So... <laughs> Okay, so anyway, what I'm doing here is, so this value is starting to fall apart a little bit, and so what I want you to do is group it. Group it with a, so that brought it together. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Just, just take that down, and same over here. Group that, I know we had a little bit over here, and we had a little bit over there, something like that. And then, oh boy, sorry. I thought I had this thing turned off. Um, just group those values. Okay. That, that is what Jane's doing. Uh, you know, in, in, the, in the recording, go back and look at her. She's grouping her values very nicely. Okay. Um, same here, I'd make that darker, much darker in the reflection. No, that's easy. I mean, I mean, I'm, I would say it's like you said, it's just an unfinished painting. Um, you don't have any big mistakes in this painting. But I would say that, see this tree right here, how it kind of fits into a oversimplified shape. So then I would do what you did around here and just take a little dry brushing around the edges. Uh huh. You know? Perfect. All right. And then as we talked about with the with the subtle shadows above, of course, above the above in here and then below, below the water, they're going to be much lighter. Right. Yeah. The they're there. Tree. They're just much lighter. So that's why I like to do all my shadows above first, you know, and then do the ones below. That way I can I can make sure that these values down below aren't competing with the values up above 
because that'll really ruin the gag, you know, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Not that we're trying to create this big illusion or anything, but, but yeah, there's the illusion part and then there's the beauty of the paint part. And I like to get them both. So. Yeah, that's very helpful, Robert. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. um, Claire. Hi. Claire. Hello. Right. Okay, now we were just talking about the groupings here. So see how you grouped this very nicely here. Um, all yep. of this is grouped and then you brought it down here. Just good. It holds together as a grouping very nicely. Right, and see see all these subtle values? Those are the correct values of shadows that should be underneath the water. What I would do now is really come back and um, really smack these values. Let me just go full force with it. Really smack. And that'll make it feel like it's more <clears throat> above the water. I see. <clears throat> there'll probably be a shadow right at the bay, right, right, right before it goes into the water, there'll probably be a dark shadow. And that'll give these more of the feeling like they're above. Keep these values really light like that. Okay. Like you're doing, it's good. And then like, you, I see you did that one, yeah. Bringing one from this part of the reflection into the light part of the reflection really pushes that feeling. So good. That's what I would play with a little bit more. Trees are fine. This tree is all the same width. I might make it a little bit fatter at the base. Okay. It's kind of, it, it is a definitely a, a scruffy looking tree. Yeah. Just don't make it all the same, you know, I mean, the same width. So okay. I can see pulling a little bit of scruff off here, you know, I mean, it, it's a, some of these trees get really gray and I mean, uh, really, um, they're, they're dying and they, they get some strange shapes to them. That's what makes them natural. And then I would definitely hit some shadows at the base of this, you know, right when it, right? What happens is you get some overhanging, overhanging brush and that creates a pretty dark shadow underneath there. Now, now probably not as dark as these, but definitely darker than anything that's below the water. Okay. So I would, I would smack some some values along there. Um, this tree right here, I would just get a little bit of shadow okay. down there, and then come back and really hit yourself some. Uh, just take that same green and just take it down into your water. Okay. Yeah, if you go that bold with something, then just go ahead and take it down. It won't, it'll it'll feel like a reflection of that tree. And I wouldn't even get too dark with it. Maybe not even that dark, but I can't, okay. I can't get the value right. About, yeah, it's about like that, yeah. It's about right. These are great, this is a great background. I mean, this that's all you need out of a background. Oftentimes, people can get so carried away with the background, it does take away from a lot of the um, stuff, good stuff. <laughs> and like I said earlier, um, you to some other people, maybe do a little overlapping here. Yeah. Just think, you know, I didn't do too much, but I, I think if I had to play with it a little bit more, maybe I'll, a little overlapping. I think would be a good idea. Okay. Do you have any other questions? Mm -hmm. um, no, I mean, it's just getting, I mean, I guess choosing what to pay attention to is yeah. important and, and having a focus. Yeah. Picture. I wasn't sure what the focus was. Yeah. Oh, the focal point? Yeah. In the piece? Yeah. Well, I would say more more of the trees in the foreground. That's where all the contrast is. The, I mean, the most contrast and most diagonal shapes. 
would be more in the foreground. Um, <clears throat> I will say though, it, it looks like you're pulling a, you're pulling, you're pulling the painting together better. What happens is as you paint more paintings, um, you stop looking at little pieces and you start seeing holes. And I'm seeing that more in your painting. Thank you. I mean, like, I, look at this. You can see this as a mass here and this as a mass here. You know, you're not getting too intricate with your things and, and you don't need to. Yeah. So, yeah. okay. Thank you. All right. We got, here's Katie. Hello, Hello. Katie. Hello. Hello. Love the vibrato. <laughs> I took up singing over Christmas. <laughs> oh, you did? No. <laughs> oh, I was going to say. Teasing. That wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> would surprise me, too. Um, okay, very high contrast. And let's see. Nice, nice color. I never have a problem with your color. Right. I had I had a nice time with the top half. I had a devil of a time with the bottom half. Yeah. Just It's Okay, so Actually, this this area right here looks pretty good. Let me let me use another color instead of a color that just blends right in. <laughs> um, yeah, right there. I'm liking that area. You know, now you can put a little more detail into these if you like. That's kind of fun. Maybe okay. your water right here got a little dark on you. The water, it did. It was uh, filthy. Yeah. Well, what you could do is just lighten it take, up. Take a little water, put it on there, let it sit for a while. Okay. Like maybe a minute. Yep. And then stamp it. You know, yep. Take your paper towel and stamp it. And it and pull off and you'll you'll you might want to do that two or three times until you get the value you want okay yeah because we, we kind of lost that little window of um, sky reflection through through here yes it's kind of a little window and you could pull that off just by putting your paper towel on the stamping it a few times you might want to pull it up a little bit you know, another thing you can do, I didn't even do this. I, you know, why didn't I do this? Easy. This is what Zorn would do. Hello. You know what I'm going to do. Take a little, oh, that's wrong. Let's see. Um, take a little white and with a little blue in it and mm. just go over that. It'll work. Okay. okay. It will work. If I was right there beside you, I'd show you just, I'd put a little hint of blue in there too. It's probably too dark. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, I mean, bring okay. it right back. Yeah, because I saw that was really green. Yeah, it'll work. It's only, it's only value. The colors are fine. Okay, um, yeah. I love this tree right here. I love how you can see right through it, right behind okay. it. You can lift a lot of air behind it. Um, yeah. I love those silhouettes. So that, that's that's all it had to oh, be. Oh, good. I mean, you know, it looks more in the foreground, but that's, you know, that's fine. It does, doesn't it? Whatever yeah. you want. <laughs> that doesn't bother me at all. I mean, okay. if you chose to put it in the foreground. Yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's all. Now, just one little thing. Um, I wonder if we could lay this down a little flatter in the back. You know what I would do? I hmm. would take your these colors back here. Yeah. Just take that down a little lower and okay. flat, really flat, because it's starting to feel like it's going like uphill. It does. Yeah. yeah. So we'll just flatten out the back a little bit. With these oh, these yeah. colors in the back, and that that should take care of that. Okay. That's about it. Great. Well, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Happy New Year.
Happy New Year to you, too. <laughs> okay. And Phoebe. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Phoebe. Uh, very nicely done. As, as maybe as far as it goes, but wow, I, not to pun too much, but was way over my head on this one. Really? Yeah. It looks pretty uh, darn good. Well, I know I just had to stop when it got to the yeah. underwater stuff because there was so much information. Yeah. I want to listen to the tape again and or watch it again and then catch up. <laughs> okay. So what I would do now is really punch these values, these shadows. So you get serious contrast up in here, right? Yeah. And then go back into your your very, very subtle, I don't really have any light values. Let me see if this will work. Um, I can do it this way. These really subtle values in here for shadows and things like that. So, so your shadows under, under the water will define things and you really you don't even have to, they don't have to be that dark. But I would just come back with some really little subtle shadows in here, some back there, maybe. Um, back there. Uh, yeah. Can I ask you something? The, the um, green on the right. This one? I, uh, the green, right, the light green. Yeah. Um, I tried to add some yellow to it. It didn't work. Um, I mean, uh, maybe lift it a little. It's too, um, I don't know, bubblegum green. It's too bright. Uh, I, would add a, I would very lightly glaze over it with, burnt sienna or red or something like that something warm yeah okay that'll that'll usually kill because you know you're doing a complementary glaze which will gray it so you're telling me that it looks a little too saturated maybe yes too saturated and i i i was trying to get your yellow punch what you did which was a nice um light yellow on yours and um on the left hand side of the river I liked it on the right hand side of the river. I didn't. Yeah, that'll help. Now this this is probably too dark, but a very light glaze of this, and then as you're putting that down, maybe just throw in some little tasty punches of yellow here and there. And let the watercolor do the rest. Okay. That's what I would do. Okay. Yeah. Terrific. Thank you. Yeah, because you're wanting to kill the green and punch a little yellow, right? Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Which is hard to do once you've got it down. Yeah, again, you're getting this Chinese-looking background. Interesting. Nice. Uh, it was a little too much wet. Thank you, but. Well, you know, we need. We all need to work. We need to get used to working a little bit wetter. So I, I want to definitely, I, and I've been getting a lot of positive feedback from you all about working wetter. So I, I think it's a good idea. Okay. Because you know, more, the more we do it, the more you get comfortable with it, and then it's really no big deal anymore. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And we have Francis. Okay. I was pretty overwhelmed with this one. There was, it yeah. seemed like it seemed like it incorporated kind of everything we've been working on. <laughs> in this yeah. series of lessons and it was all in one so yeah. i probably need to do this one a hundred more times huh <laughs> well we'll do other things that are that incorporate a lot of the same thing uh-huh so um it's not like a, we won't we'll it's not like it's a, a lesson unique to itself you know we'll still do some wedding away we'll still do some reflections we'll and you you just get better at <clears throat> realizing what you're looking at, you know, that's what it is. Okay. Okay, so then, so value-wise here, this is a nice painting, nice color. Um, I'm thinking value-wise, we could get a little darker with 
some of the reflections over here. You see how, if you squint your eyes, they, they don't really separate from the sky over here. Right. The, the right. reflection of the trees doesn't really separate enough. So you got the color right. It's just darker value. I go over the whole thing darker there and all this. Okay. I don't know if you want to leave a little bit of that sky coming through or not, whatever. But yeah, grouping all that and this. And then here, that's not, that's not bad. That's not bad. Yeah, that's not bad. Well, um, and I, I made the mistake of putting the log like straight across so it looks like it's two different paintings. So that would, I. So when I make a mistake like that, what I'll do is. Throw stuff over it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, like this, I'll take some of that. What that does is it 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 says, oh, that's behind this. Oh, you know, because okay. oftentimes I've looked at my paintings and, and I thought, you know, that looks awfully abstract. What what am I doing there? Or, or um, you know, what I'm I'm not able to make out what that is, and then I throw something over it, and it, and it it solves itself. So I would throw something over it over here. Okay. Yeah. And then maybe a little cast shadow. Um, a little cast shadow or something over it over there. Shadows can do a lot. So as if something uh, from somewhere else is casting a shadow, who knows? Okay. All kinds of things can happen. You could have a big overhanging branch that's not in the piece casting a shadow, but you know, Things like that can really, because I, I have definitely done paintings where I'm looking at, I thought the whole thing was great and then I look at it and it looked like two separate paintings. <laughs> yeah. This one doesn't so much, but it's starting to do that. So, yeah. <laughs> and then I would definitely punch these values like we talked about, really, really, really hit them. Okay. Really hard, dark. Okay. They're really dark in there. Yeah. And I might come back into this tree and hit this one with a little more dark just to get it to come forward a little bit more from these ones in the background. Okay. A little dark. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. All right. Got Judy. Clear my drawings here. Okay, Judy. Nice colors, nice grouping. Thank you. I think I got overworked in the background a little. I think I wish it was wetter and lighter. I think I got too dark there. You know, what, what you can do is just flood it with some water, let it sit a little bit, and then come back and just play with the edges a little bit. Okay. Because it's, it's, it, it sounds like you're telling me you want softer edges. Yeah, I think the trees that are closer in mm -hmm. the foreground, I just think they're too dark. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I could just wipe them off, wet it, and then like wipe them down a bit. Or huh? stamp it. Remember? Just, yeah. just take yeah. the, just take it and stamp it, pull it off. That'll pull it off without getting the smearage, you know? Right. You know, is that a word? Smearage? Smearing. Yeah. And then, uh, because sometimes what happens is when you, when you wipe it, you smear it and then it's, it's in the paper so hard, it's really hard to get out. Yeah. So I do a lot of stamping. Okay. <clears throat> now we are getting a, a touch of this idea that I, I was having a problem with too. And that's a, you got this one here yeah, and this one here, and they're, they're similar sizes. So what I would do is offset. It looks like you did pull some trees over the front of this, but you can't see them because these are too dark, right? Right. So yeah, I would make a couple of darker trees over that background. Maybe even one coming out from right next to this tree. Okay. That way you'll get, you know, you, maybe you get one, two, three trees or so up in here yeah. and then just one tree over here. Okay. okay. Yeah, so lightening up the background will help. Now just remember, I would I would do the what we just talked about in the background, light, lightening this up, but I would also um, come back and take a little white Take a little glaze of white back here. I mean,
mean, maybe just the white would be fine, but... Oh, yeah, maybe I could try that. Okay. And that'll... See? Mm-hmm. And now when you pull these darker values over the front... Mm-hmm. You know, they really, they really uh, cover. Okay. Yeah. So there's a good way to use white. Okay. All right, this, this, this feels pretty good. I still would pop these shadows down in here really dark. Pop them. Okay. Really dark. I, you know, to be honest with you, I just, I, I was watching you and I kind of got lost in the whole thing. And, and then I just ended up making it abstract shapes, which I then thought, oh, I wish I had done that a little bit. More. The, the bottom is too different in style from the top, but it was an interesting okay. exercise. I'd never really done water. It, it's not bad. Um, all I'm saying is just punch your values. It just looks uh, unfinished. Okay. Now, if you want to bring this this dark, this dark, really bright log here, mm -hmm. hit a little white on that too. And let me tell you, John Singer Sergeant would hit a lot of white on that log. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> just, just go ahead and smack it in there. Um, and I always use Sergeant as an example, just because he's known as the great technician. Yeah. Yeah. He's really the, the, the technical, not, less, not necessarily the most artistic though, but he's definitely the most technical. Yeah. He's a beautiful uh, artist as well, but he's just, there's definitely other artists that I could point to that, that, that solve. Now here's, here's another, remember, a little overlapping here, right? Right. A little overlapping here might, might, uh, might, might work in this instance a little bit more. Okay, I'll try that. Yeah, look at the background. I like I like just putting that white over the background. That really made a huge difference. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a question of value, that's all it is. Okay. That's all. All right, thanks, Rob. Yeah. Thank you. Um, okay, Ethel. All right. Yeah. Hello, Ethel. Well, oh, thank you. I didn't finish the front, the, the foreground very well. It needs to get darker. Right. It just looks yeah. less finished. Now, I one thing I, I, I think you could use a little more. This is nice work, too. I mean, you, this is a nice piece. Thank you. It, it's, it looks really almost there. Um, yeah, almost. That's the trick. I would punch these values a little bit darker in the reflections. Definitely, yeah. A little darker. Yeah. Leave it. Leave it light where your where your light is, because mm -hmm. this will give you more punch. Your you'll get more contrast here from the reflection to the sky reflection. And um, and then and then go go in and throw in your very subtle like this one. It's a beautiful value. This shadow. This one right underneath here. Mm-hmm. That's that's the that's a that's a masterful one right there. Thank you even you. got a little ripplage in there as well. Wow. I like that one. <laughs> yeah, you should. Um, yeah, and then really come back and, and these could use a little more a little more dark. I'm probably getting too dark, but I mean some nice darks in there. Yeah. Yeah, that's where I think it just got too light. I, even though I had darks, they didn't. It doesn't hold together as a form or a shape. Yeah, easy enough though. Yeah. Punch that, and then you'll see. Then, then just come back with some very subtle values underneath, mm -hmm. and that should wrap the whole thing together. Very cool. nice. Nice looking piece. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Any other details you want to add? I mean, that's that's beauty. What about I mean, that yellow? Was that your yellow? your hill too? Let me let me bring that back here. Yeah. Your, your hill in the background is is great. Maybe okay. maybe it could be a little lighter. So yeah. if you wanted to, you could add a little white to it. It's up totally up to you, but um, yeah. it's working. I could just see it being maybe a touch lighter. Yeah, I got a little too. Dark. I always get too dark too fast. So. So what what was your question? Did you have another question? Mine was on the yellow part. That oh that, the yellow, yeah. What about it? Too yellow? Should I kill it a little, or is it okay? 
little variation to it. Um, I don't mind it. I mean, I've seen things like that, but you know, you could always throw in some green variations to it. Throw some in, yeah. Okay. You know, I guess that would be a bluer variation because yellow and blue. Yeah. So, but um, <laughs> yeah, some little variations to it, but I, I, I like it. Oh, good. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Okay. Good lesson. Thank you. Thank you. And Toby. Hello. All right. Really good wet in the wet in the background. Thanks. You definitely have the watercolor deal down. Um, I could see a little more like we talked about here in the four. Um, how about this? Punch. Let's see. Is it this one? Yeah, a little lighter. I do the Zorn trick in the background. Okay. Just a little bit lighter. It'll make that stuff not compete with your foreground. And then, so with yours, it's it's only a question of value. Everything's fine. It's just adjusting a few values. So then I would. Okay. Um, a little lighter there, maybe a little deeper with these reflections. A little darker, just walk it up. A little darker. I could even see green in that. I can only do one at a time on this thing, but you know, that's a little too green, but um, a little darker. Well, it'll make this, this, it'll make this pop more. Okay. And then some dark, you know, in here. Darker. Mm -hmm. Really, really hit them. Yeah. Really hit those strong. I usually don't have trouble with that. <laughs> you know, that that's the number one <laughs> most common problem. I have the same problem. I, mean, I, I, I definitely have some more darks I could hit in mine. So. <clears throat> I mean, I usually am over it. I have things are too dark, so. <laughs> yeah, you usually do punch them, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm so I'm happy to have to do that. Yay. <laughs> First painting of the year. Well, you know, just just, just pop a couple. It's, that's all. Yeah. It just, I call it pushing and pulling the painting. So what we did is we pushed the darks here, uh -huh. and then we pulled the lights here. Yeah, that's yeah. so great. That really, I think that will help a lot. Um, in that foreground, um, do I need to glaze? I, I don't know. It didn't. I had a lot of trouble with it. <clears throat> Does it need another glazing in parts or anything, or do you think just the dark will just be enough? Maybe a little more. Are your reflection glazed in there? You mean? Mm -hmm. Or something? Oh. I don't know. And then why. maybe some of this blue. Uh -huh, the blue. Mm -hmm. I think I did try that, but it wasn't, didn't really work. So like a little more heavily. Mm -hmm. And then maybe um, if, if it's too heavy, either lighten it or let's see what this does. Eh, hmm. maybe. Okay. White glazes, like I call them washes. So when I, when I put a wash on a painting, I usually have white in it. When I put a glaze on a painting, I don't have any white in it. And that, oh, okay. that, that's the way I use the words. Um, uh, you could say an opaque glaze, though. So, so in other words, back here is, it's, it's, or you could say a translucent gray glaze, because uh -huh. we can actually see through it, almost like it's looking through a frosted window or something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So we're we're just pushing and pulling the values. Your colors. Uh, you don't. You don't. I mean, um, it's a good place to be. Push. I'm almost always pushing and pulling my values. It just needs. I'm just saying. Uh, you know, a little lighter here, a little darker here. Yeah, and I, I could definitely see a little more blue, possibly up in here. Uh huh. Maybe blue and white. Mix it together and and then put a glaze over that and see what happens. That sounds good. Yeah. yeah it'll work. Great. We would have had a little more time and I would have thought of it. I, I would have done it on this painting. It, it, it looks good on paintings, let me tell you. Looks good on water. Okay. Is that a Zorn? Was that a Zorn move? Oh, yes. 
Zorin is the master of water. If you could, if you look at look his name up online, Anders Zorn Watercolors, and look at yeah. look at the way he paints water. He really understands water. We'll check Maybe that out. Maybe the best. I don't know. Definitely one of the runners up. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. Great. Thank you, Thank you so you. much. Uh huh. And Suzanne. Oh, you really got the water. Wow. Wow. I'm really feeling the um, the above and below water thing going on here. Very well done. Thanks. Yeah. You know, it's a fun trick too. Um, take a little bit of your, like this. And I, I forgot the stick that was coming out of the water there. I, I just painted right over it like a dummy. Um, but take a little bit of it and put it, glaze it underneath the water like that. I did that after I took the picture and sent it to you. I, then I looked oh, you at did? the picture okay, and good. I thought that's exact. So I used blue. Oh, you used blue. I okay. Blue, was, blue would work. So you know, if you get the value right, it pretty much anything will work. And eh. we'll see. But, um, yeah. And maybe. Like for, as this goes underneath the other log, maybe hit a little darker. Oh, okay. Um, but you got the above and below, and I like how you overlap the branch. This is a good, a good example of overlapping the bush over the um, background there. But look at this area right here. Really feels above and below. You really got that above and below thing going on there. Yep. That's gotta be satisfying. Um, I would need a little bit of a cast shadow. Yeah. These trees. Yeah, I didn't like my green. <laughs> maybe, maybe you're getting some shadow here along this edge. Uh -huh. uh, let me make my more lower. You got that, you got that. Maybe a little bit more along this edge. Okay. A little there, this is fine. I like how you can see behind the trees. I like your, uh, wow. You really got a nice looking mountain in there. And, and look, everybody, look at the way she has this overlapping this, overlapping this, overlapping. See how it walks you back in space? So I didn't bother doing that much. That, that's well done. Um, you if taught anything, us that with Carmel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you learn that when you're over there, don't you? <laughs> but that's good. Well, that's good. You're 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 taking lessons and applying them to other lessons, and you're 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 giving yourself lessons and you're learning from. That's that's a that's what you just do after a while. I, I these darks back here though, these darks at the base, I might line them up a little bit. Okay. So they feel further away. Okay. The the, the rule there is is all they need to be is a little bit darker than what's next to them. Right. Okay. And or what will happen is that they they'll compete with things way up here in the foreground. Right. You know, and, and um, you flatten out your painting. Okay. <clears throat> so, and again, the, the Zorn trick would work back there. Uh, if you wanted to, with a little bit of haze, very little bit, you could do a little hazing back there and that does the trick too. Okay. That's that's what that, that yeah. sort of translucent white wash does is it, it, um, it makes things feel more atmospheric. Now what my little trick is, is I'll put a little bit of blue in that white because that's the color of atmosphere. It's just pure theory and it works. It's funny. So yeah. trees look great. I, I, yeah. Wonderful. Nice painting. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, thank you. Really, Happy new year. You too. You really got that feeling of the above and below the water. Okay, you got it too. Hi. Hello. You know, I went and hit this without, uh, who is it? Whose is this? Betsy. Betsy, sorry. I went and hit this without looking at your name, sorry. Um, yeah, good groupings, good groupings. Uh, you see this contrasty value there you got? See how it pops away from the blue there? Mm -hmm. I might take a little bit of that around here. No big deal. 
Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Just just cool. to get that contrast, you right. this value right here under the water is great. You got you nailed it. Right, yeah, yeah. That's the same as getting like a taste right when you're cooking. You know. <laughs> <laughs> You just got the, it, not too salty, not too sweet. You get it just right. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's, that's what this is all about. Really, this, 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 whole, this whole thing is an exercise in value. Um, okay, I might punch this a little harder. Okay, where are you? I can't, oh, I see your marker. Okay, there you are. Yeah, a little, yeah. A little darker under there. Yep. Maybe even darker. Really nice. And you want to really smack those. Okay in there and yeah you got this nice and dark over here and nice and bright here so it feels like it's coming out of the water right there that's the best you could even take a little white if you wanted to and make this one feel like it's coming out of the water too okay or do the reverse right here and, and see how this one's going into the water maybe even put a little bit below the surface that's that's really fun um, just to take a little bit of uh, shadow. A little shadow below the, I don't know. It's something to think about. Pretty successful painting though, don't you think? Yeah, no, I'm surprised That's myself. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Now I have a pretty hard line right here too. Is that your pencil line? Yeah, there? I think there's a pencil line in there somewhere. It's yeah. not. It's not a bad thing. But if you did want to lighten that up, what you what you could do is just just take a damp brush, hit it there, and, and um, put some water. Yeah, a little, little okay. water and loosen that up. If it doesn't bug you, don't change it. It's kind of nice. I like to see puddly marks where you know. They just remind us that this is a watercolor. It's a yeah. puddle. Yeah. Let's really hit this with a little more contrast in the front. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Thank great. You. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, Daryl. Wow, you got the blue on the water. Wow. Oh. I wish I would have mean that. I wish I would have mean mine that blue. You really got the blue. See, that just screams sky reflection right there. Yeah, but I lost the water in the middle, Rob. I, I don't know. I'm not, should I try to wipe it out? I don't have enough water there in the middle there. You, you, maybe you took too many. Well, it, it, it still works for me. But um, if, you wanted, if you want to correct that, I would, I would wipe these out, a little bit of water, let it sit, and, and um, either wipe them out or sort of uh, stamp them out. Kind of pat it out, get them lighter. Can I scrub some of that out and, and, and make more yeah. water? There or... Yeah, you could scrub some of it out and then maybe come back with a little bit of um. Yeah, and then the shadow color went too green. I don't. It sh should be warmer. You know, I should have put more red in that in that shadow color. So <laughs> it. I mean, it's browner looking, isn't it? The shadow color over the in the water. Yeah, I'm throwing a little bit of red in there. Here and there, yeah, I think a little red in there would be good. Your foreground right here looks fantastic. It seems warmer. Fantastic. It's almost a brown. It seems warmer in the front there. Ah. Wow. There's a lot of brown in this. In this. Um, yeah, the mountains. <laughs> The mountains really faded. I really had it wet. I really wet the paper a lot this time, so everything faded out. It's, I think these darks you put in there are maybe a little too dark. Right here. Should I go over it? Darken I, some? No, I, I just take them out. It, they're, they're, they're probably too dark. You want them to feel far away. Yeah. Um, so I would just. Yeah, I can. Those, just, just take maybe. I would take these out personally. And then yeah, um, what else? I can wipe that down a little bit. Yeah. Um, but you really got the feeling of the water, water reflection. I also might hit something giving us a shoreline here, just a subtle kind of shoreline there. Yeah, yeah, that's what it means. 
just something subtle. Doesn't have to be a big deal. More blue in the water back there. Yeah. Yeah, bring up the color in, in the water too, maybe here. Yeah. And then I think I would hit these, uh, maybe even darker up in here in the foreground. Yeah. I'll do it. Yeah, hit hit that. Yeah, this is a, <laughs> this was a tough one to start the new year. <laughs> it was busy. You guys, you get, you guys want an easy one next week? <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a challenge. Well, I'm messing around a little bit. See what, see what. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right, Diane. Hi, Rob. Hi. I'm so rusty. <laughs> I'm so rusty after almost a month <laughs> of not painting. <laughs> well, that feels above and below the water. Does it? Oh, well. <laughs> I could see uh, maybe a little bit lighter back here. Okay, okay. It it got, you know, when it was all that wet on wet, it got really, really mushy. Yeah. And so um, I went back in while I was waiting for parts of it to dry. I went back in to kind of try to just beef, beef it up a little bit, but I guess I got too dark. <laughs> yeah, and you know, a lot of times in photographs, it will read too dark, and so just for the sake of distance, I, I would do that. That's, that's okay. Only, You're it's not bad. Absolutely right. Yep. And I might make this a little more, a little more contrast between the reflection and for the um, the reflection of the trees here, oh, and the right. reflection of the sky. Just a little more contrast, like like this right here. Right. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit more contrasty. Yep. I see exactly what you mean. That's just a quick glaze. <laughs> Yeah, and then maybe just take it right over. That makes so much sense. It does. Thank you. Sure, and then you get the above and below the water. You, you know, you're like, these 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 values down in your water look good. Um, yeah. If you want to, a little maybe a little bit of overlapping here, if you like. I don't know. Okay. If you like. I, I completely forgot about that tree branch with the sagey um, kind of yeah. leaf on it down there. Totally forgot about the, that. <laughs> you can add a little white to your color on that to do that as well. Yep, um, yep. Just, just a little bit of like, you know, like got a CG color here. You know, whatever. Yeah. If you like. I thought it, it doesn't have to be a big deal or anything though. Something to break it up or soften that spot. So I like that you yeah. that included it. But I, when I went to. Um, do mine. I thought, oh my gosh, I didn't even leave room for it. So I'll, I'll remember to do that. Okay. I think I want to do this over again. This is like, <laughs> 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 what it's a, it's a, it was a challenging one to start off. Um, yeah. With that yeah. Kind of for so long, but it is. Yeah, Actually, I guess it was. Well, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I like that you, you push us. So, um, oh, okay. Because next week we're going to do a three-point perspective looking down into New York City from the... No, I'm just joking. No, I appreciate it. Definitely. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Nice work, Dan. Uh, let's see. We're at Marie. Oops. Okay, Marie. All right. Lots of contrast. Let's see. Now, in this case, I, I might actually. It's a nice piece. It really pops. So, you don't need, I mean, your foreground is Fenicio, really nice. I love this. This log right here is great. I might lighten up the background. You could do a little Zorn on that. Like I said, I usually use a little bit of blue in that, just a very little bit of blue just to cool off that kind of uh, mist back there. But 
Rob, what would yeah. be the ratio of water to white? Because a lot of us have to go over our backgrounds in white. How much, how wet should it be? How wet should it be? Um, it, uh, you don't want too much water. Too, too much water will make it flow all over the place. Okay. But not enough in, you, in your dry brushing. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just a little bit more than dry brushing. Okay. Because you want it to cover, but you want to be able to see through it as well. Right. So it, it takes some, I, what I would do is um, start it off a little hot, dry. Right? Okay. Because if you start it off too wet, it just gets out of control. Okay. So if you start it off a little dry and then you see, okay, this is getting too dry brushy. I need to add a little bit more water. So you just add a little bit more water and a little bit okay. more until you get it just the way you want. That's the way I call it walking it up. Okay. And using gouache, right? White gouache. Yeah. White gouache. There's yeah. also uh, what Chinese white will work as well. Okay. So I, I, I am not sure what, uh, what Zorn actually used. Okay, sorry to interrupt this critique, no. but you've been, you, we've been talking about a lot of us have to do that in the background and I thought, oh, I just wanted to. Yeah, clarify. that's no problem. Okay. Now, yeah, so a little bit of that back there. And. Now, if this gets too green for you, you want a little bit more blue sky feeling on that. You, you could do the same thing. Just add a little bit of a little bit of the same mixture of that white mm -hmm. with a little bit of blue on it here. And that'll work. I, I might not put it. I noticed up in the foreground, it's not quite as quite as blue and stuff. So be careful if you, if, if at all. Um, anyway. A little bit of blue up in here could could help you as well. Um, nice piece. Thank you. You're welcome. It, again, it was a a challenge piece, I think. <laughs> but. Yeah. Any more questions? I, I love this shadow right here. This one. This one's. Oh, thanks. Yeah. It's kind of bring us from one reflection to the other. You know, it really those transitions really help to make things feel convincing. Oh. That was your trick, and I learned that today. Yeah, I, I, I noticed mine dried like so light, I'm going to have to go back over it. Oh, well. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. George. Hi there. Hello. Okay. Whoops, sorry. I don't know how that happened. I'm just, I don't know why I did that. Okay. All righty. Nice saturated colors. Thank you. How about that one behind you? I see your picture. That one behind you looks pretty cool. <laughs> oh, thanks. I don't know. It looks like the same colors. <laughs> um, let's see. What we got here? Right here. All right. Some blue. Now, if you do want these to feel further away, we could do the white trick as well. The atmospheric trick. Yeah. And so, so we could get a little more distance out of it. And then sometimes I save those like, especially uh, shadows with a lot of blue in them. I'll throw them up here in the foreground, like maybe this one. Okay. I mean, you know, keep it the way it is, but I mean, <clears throat> I like mine to go a little blue grayer and then the more saturated blues and the, and the shadows I really save for the foreground usually. Yeah. Well, I could add more saturated uh, sure. on the foreground and maybe that'll uh, smack a little bit of the saturation of the background. Yeah. And then I think this reflection works really nice, but this one I think could be a little darker. Okay. So it kind of frames it. Let's see, something, you know, like in here, just bring that up, just take a, just take a wash of something similar to this color. Okay. And take that over. 
just kind of grouping it all there. Now, if if you like, if you want some of these logs to feel brighter, you can smack a little white on top. All right. Yeah, that was some white mixed with a, uh, it really was a red. Um, and it, my palette got screwed up, so I just used it. Uh -huh. but I could even put some white over that. Yeah. Yeah, just a little bit, you know, just, just, just a little touch on the tops. I like how you went with your diagonal this way. That was cool. I was one. I kept wondering what would it look like if I had a diagonal going that way, and that totally works. Okay, thanks. So there's that idea. Above and below, right here. This this is feeling pretty darn good. Oh, thanks. Yeah, the the ones below the surface are very, very light in value, very light in value. So as you're putting those in, just like, like, like maybe this value here, like a really light. Yeah. I think mine ended up more just like marks uh, for, for variety. Yeah. Well, that's cool. You know, I like marks. <laughs> when, you, when you said marks, I'm going, is Mark in this class? Yeah. <laughs> it's like marks. I'm going, what? What? Oh. <laughs> I'm apt to take you literally. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> nice color. I like this green on here. This is really good. You know, I love it when the greens have the blues in them like this and then the reds in them like that. That feels really natural. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. But see now, if you lighten up these, whoops, if you lighten up these trees in the background, see how they almost compete with these trees here up in the foreground? Yeah. These, these trees. So if you lighten up these ones behind it, you'll get more of a silhouette. And oh. if you go over and do the Zorn trick where you go over with white, you won't, you won't lose any of your information back here. It's just like you're putting in a, uh, a haze over them. And so the, this, these guys will stand out a little bit more. Okay. That's about it. All right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Um, Caroline. All right. DHS is on the scene. And also... Now... Just out of curiosity, is this a little piece of light? Um, whoops. Is this just like a little piece of white right here? I was not hearing you. Um, let me see. Is that just some light that kind of came in through your window on it or something? It looks yeah. like. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So with, I like your colors. This really feels like your style too. Um, you're one of these people that has a, a, a style, like a built-in style. <laughs> like I can, I can tell when I look at your painting that I can tell your painting, um, which is, you know, that, that might, <clears throat> to people, I know a lot of people that have that, they think it's no big deal, but it's kind of like some of the people that have color or some of the people that have another gift, um, it, it's no big deal because this comes so naturally for you. But for for the other, like me, for instance, I think I need to really work on my style. But you don't. Mm, thank you. Uh, you're lucky. Um, I had a question. Yeah. Uh, I tried to put some of the white color that I have on my um, watercolor box. Yeah. And it didn't really do anything because that I thought was too dark. So would you suggest to use white gouache? Would that be a little bit yeah. more effective? Yeah, I would use white gouache. Sometimes the whites that they sell you as part of a watercolor thing, you know, they're, they're not strong. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. so you see how that instantly makes your trees in the foreground come, come forward? Yeah, I Just like putting... 
paintings. I didn't. Re I don't remember the name of the lady that did it, but she had the back and forth going, and she really made it go far. I thought that was a very good touch. Yeah, it's just it's just value. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, now um, I might put another glaze over this to bring it together a little bit more, maybe with greens or something. I don't know, but just to bring it, just just so it really separates from your from your sky. You get your sky reflections here and your tree reflections over here. Now these tree reflections are, I mean, your trees are quite a bit smaller, so maybe they would only do a reflection about like that. But who cares? Um, but you see, you have a lot of different values in your, um, mm -hmm. in this, so I would just bring it together. Okay. I just, I call it a harmonizing glaze. I just put it over there like that, boom. And then I might put a little bit more over these. Um, and then I, I would really punch the darks in here like we've been talking about, so really. I was not successful with the tree trunks at all. I tried, but they didn't well, do don't it. Watch, watch what happens when you hit these darks in there. Don't be surprised if you just go, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. they, they will, they really will. Hit, hit those. Uh, some semi-color or opaque colors because mine are all transparent. They're just not doing it. Right, right. So get something dark here and then as it goes into the water, this value will be much lighter like the one you have. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little bit darker than what you have, like um, Ah. Also, do you think I would have done better had I used a bigger brush? Well, almost always you're better with a bigger brush. Mm -hmm. yeah, almost always. That's just across the board. Most people are. So uh, as big a brush as you can. Let's see. Yeah, really punch those values and then yeah really come back in here and hit some of these subtle values in here as we can see them you really you got a good value going right there though you really hit it that's maybe about 10 layers of color <laughs> <laughs> so you really like to build up now that's fine um lots that's that's very traditional painting too if you look at some english watercolor paintings or um it's like Victorian age, they, they use 20 glazes to build up a glaze. So. Yeah, maybe I will dust my other colors that are a little bit more opaque and semi-opaque. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, too. Gina, why do I get the feeling you use watercolor? <laughs> <laughs> this is not watercolor, and it has very little to do with that painting, so I wasn't that interested in the water, but I like the mountains. <laughs> yeah, but it sure is yummy. I, sh I forgot I should have brought my spoon. I would have taken up a nice little, <laughs> nice little chunk of that. Delicious. Yeah. Yeah. Just the feeling of nature, the feeling of... Um, um, Oh, by the way, is this an acrylics? Yeah. Yeah, because now if you wanted to try that Zorn trick after this is all dry, and it might take this one a while to dry, <laughs> but um, um, just so you all know, I mean, acrylic acts like all mediums. It's, it's, it's the granddaddy. In my, in my opinion, acrylic is, um, it can do anything any other medium does. Yeah. You can do anything with it. So if you wanted to do that Zorn trick with this, you know, you wait for it to dry and then you water down a little white with maybe a touch of blue in it and you just glaze over it and you can glaze with it. You can use it opaque. This is all opaque, wet into wet. Are you doing any palette knifing? Yeah. There's nice. some in the back, the sort of gray part in the background was all palette knife. Yeah. And then a lot of the lines are really thinned out paint with a little tiny brush. Yeah. Fun. Yeah, it was I think fun. you had a blast. 
It was fun until I turned on the news. I don't know if anyone has heard the news today. Oh, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> yeah, I won't bring it to class, but. I'm sure I'll hear it. Yeah. It, uh, you know, I can tell you were watching the news. Yeah. Oh. This painting. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, um, nice work. Nice, nice, nice looking paint. Thank you. And see these uh, values way back here. Should have used red or something. Um, these these ones way back here feel feel really far away. And so, if you wanted those to feel farther away, you could uh, use grayer colors like these. Mm -hmm. So, but anyway, that's that's beautiful. I love all these layers. One, two, three. Love all those layers. Really feels like overlapping brush. Wonderful. Thank you. It's fun. Okay. Beautiful job. Thank you very much. All right. Let's see. And we're going to Shelly. Hey, Rob. Happy New hey, Year. Hey. Happy New Year to you. How are you doing? Good. I'm doing great. Feeling good. Good. I'm glad to hear that. I will tell you though, I mean, I have been mega dosing. I've heard about this uh, mega dosing on the vitamin D. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, and, and zinc. And yeah, and the zinc too. I've been, I, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, so anyway, I don't know why I feel better, but uh, maybe that has something to do with it. Hmm. Anyway, it's good. It's good to be back. All right. I love how you took this one tree right here. You just. You see how she 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 um, sees it as a big body of color, yellow to green to very saturated blue, and it's kind of dense. And then look, she really opened up this area by letting us see all kinds of background behind the silhouette on this on the left side. Huh. So. Um, nice work, nice foregrounds, beautiful. You really do. Can you feel how the, the, the log comes out and then goes back into the water here? It's great. These feel below the surface of the water because she glazed. If you yeah. wanted those to come out above, just smack them with a little white. But yeah, I, 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 I don't mind. Like Simplifying that foreground part for me. Maybe it maybe it got a little complicated, huh? Yeah. And beautiful colors. Yeah. <clears throat> beautiful colors. Now even even if you look at the overall theme of this color, it, it's a cool theme to the color. See? The the whole coloration of the piece is a cool, a cool painting. Cool palette. And while wow, you really didn't, she didn't pull any punches on this value right here, everybody. Look at this. <laughs> I know it kind of Look how dark she went with that value in that reflection. But see how it works? You can get pretty dark with those reflections. And then you got lighter with it going into there. That was a great move. Yeah. I, that makes me want to get darker with my reflection over here on this side. I think I might do that. Um, yeah, I, let's see. I guess this could have been more at a diagonal. I don't know. I think it's fine. Uh, I like this diagonal a lot. Quit, mm. quit painting paintings like this where I don't have anything bad to say about them. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say bad, but uh, I. do you have any questions? Uh. No, I was just, it was really fun to get back into this. That's all. Yeah. I, I, I appreciated the break, but I'm really happy to be painting again. And yeah. color, I'm going to be using more color. You can see this. I'm using more color. You mean you're, you're more saturated color, you mean? Yeah. I'm yeah. just trying to, trying to experiment some more with that. Sure. And, you know, everybody, um, darks are a great place to really hit color. So... Let, let's say we have this dark 
you know, as long as you get the value right, this is what she's showing you here. The blue. I mean, there isn't any blue in that tree, actually, but why not hit some blue just for just for the beautiful reason to paint, you know, to paint color. So it, so what I'm trying to show you here by the red or by another color, it's, let's say hitting um, a dark blue in there. I don't have a blue dark enough, but by hitting these darker colors, now what we've done is we've taken kind of a gray or a green and we've, we've uh, added a little bit of excitement to it. So darks are a great place to smack uh, saturation here too. So anyway, those are my favorites. All right. Thank, Thank you. you my favorite thing is this tree right here. This is driving me crazy. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful work. Thank you. Looks very effortless. Okay, and oh Caroline, you showed me another one, huh? No, it's the same. Oh, okay. And uh Mits it's cool. Okay. <clears throat> Oh, you went, you took the white over the water, huh? Nice. Uh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. See, I think that works. Could you imagine if we would have painted everything under the water as if it were over the water? And then when we were done, glazed it with that, with that glaze? Oh my gosh, might have worked. Anyway, that feels like a reflection. Beautiful. I mean, personally, I would have gone a little bit lighter. Yes. The background. Yeah? Yeah, I, 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 I did it like many times and couldn't yeah. get the nice color. <clears throat> yep. So now I'm going to go a little, a little yeah. more contrast, a little, little darker here. Darker? A little more dark okay. on both sides. Maybe even darker. I wish I could get that dark enough. And then it starts making this feel more like sky. Uh-huh. Here. So. Um, and you're doing your line thing around everything. Good. And you're signing it at an angle. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start doing that. Dang. Everybody. We've got some people in here that have some really interesting ways to sign signatures. That's always stumped me. How to sign a signature. I don't know. <laughs> Um, trees look great. Yeah, just lighter background and maybe maybe a little more contrast up in here. Yes. Oh, okay. A darker. darker yeah, shade. that's where I would hit the. That's where I'd really pop your darks. Mm -hmm. In here, underneath there. Yeah. <laughs> underneath where, the, where where they have dark shadows, that's where I would hit them. Okay. All right, beautiful. Any any, any questions? Nice. Uh, yes, uh, the background when when it's already uh, darker, how do I uh, how do I uh, derute <laughs> the darkness? How do I make it lighter? I I would just throw white with a little bit of blue in it. Oh, okay. I yeah. did. I, I actually I did, but then it looks like a little bit mist around oh. around here around the yeah. If you take that yours out, I get, you can see like a mist. Yeah. You see? But oh, I can even see how it drip down here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Um, but that's not enough, right? It's the whole thing. Yeah, I might go dark. I might I might go uh, lighter with it, just so it feels further away. Like yeah. these values back here. Yeah. In the background, personally, yeah, that, that's what I would do. Um, and then, so lighter up there and more more dark in the shadows up here. Yes. Yeah, that's all. Everything else is Mitsuko all over it. <laughs> thank you. <so> <laughs> okay, thank um, you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And Henry, Hi, bold um, and brave. Nice work. Thank you. You know, I really like how you did this. See how he, he takes this tree and bends it in 
like that. It's so, um, it's so different than these more rigid straight ones over here. So that was, that was nice. I like the way you did that. It's just good to have, it's not, nothing wrong with having things on the same, I mean, things on both sides, but a uh, little variation. And so you see why it gives it variation by bending this tree and bending it this way, and that's fine. <clears throat> Yeah, and if I, I like the fact that the right tree is, seems to be bending a little to the left, and the left tree see, be, bends to the right. So the two of them are like bending yeah. toward one another, it looks like. I find it beautiful. Yeah, really natural. I think really the natural. little tree in the middle, uh, we call it the jumper or the baby ones, actually connect them. That's a nice touch. Yeah. The, this one? Between the two trees, you got some small trees. I think that was copied from you, uh, but that, that's very important in... in yeah, in yeah, it is, it is important. Communication, uh, co connection between the two sides. And by, by keeping your water light like that, you, you get a nice little silhouette. Yeah. That, that works. I, um, that nice. Yeah. Your tree is up in the foreground. Um, I mean, these, uh, these logs in the water are great. Thank you. Really feels like, wow, especially this area right here. Mm -hmm. And this area right in here really feels dimensional. That's all we're, we're just trying to get that dimension, you know, like in and out and you got reflections and there's a lot going on. <laughs> I, yeah, I just the, uh, it, I think the media does most of the work. I didn't really think about it, the, um, the objects, just the color and layers. Yeah. The shape of the, yeah. the whole thing. Uh, yeah, that's a good, great lesson. Okay. Nice. Thank you. Um, any questions? I mean, did you, I don't know. If I had to say anything, maybe a little more shadow here. Oh, uh, yeah, that's uh, my question uh, the yellow tem tends to be too vibrant maybe so more oh, okay uh -huh. okay if it if a, if a color is too vibrant take the complementary which would be like a violet oh yeah some subtle yeah. violets and just barely glaze them over like like you're doing right here uh -huh. these little a little violet yeah then well, with a little blue so violet would be a good color i think yeah yeah it'll that. gray it <laughs> okay so you know what I mean is like very little, uh -huh. like one percent. Okay. Because um, yeah. it'll it'll easily gray the color. I don't. I wouldn't want you to kill that yellow. Uh -huh. It's kind of nice. Okay. But uh, if you're wanting to tame it down a little bit, yeah, a little uh -huh. compliment. Okay. Violet. Okay. okay. Thank you, yeah. Rob. Thank Happy you. New Year. Happy New Year. Hello, Alice. Happy New Year. Okay, let's go down here. Are you there, Alice? I saw you earlier. <clears throat> okay. So if I had to say anything, there's Alice. Hello. Um, okay, sorry. There we go. Now, I, I could still see these going a little bit uh, lighter. Maybe a little bit lighter. I'll leave that up to you. Okay, yeah. It, it could be the photograph, because sometimes in the, in the photograph, these darks look as dark as some of these darks. So they don't look quite that dark in here, but some of them are. This is nice. I like these little baby trees grow, growing below this and this these two beside that. You know. By pulling yours down here and keeping these up here, you, you get a little bit more dimension. Oh, okay. mine, mine are a little bit more side by side. So I, I think that was a good move. Thank you. Yeah. Ooh, you really got the above and below. Yeah, this shadow going over this right here really works. Sometimes it takes me a minute to go look around your painting here. 
Um, <sighs> wow. Look at these reflections you got in here. These are beautiful. Right in here. I can feel the, the sky reflection and the tree reflection. Thank you. Yeah. You got nice, nice contrast. It took up me here. a while. I, this is actually my second. Oh, thank you. Too? Wow. Yeah. Be, the second one I tried to do an abstract, but it was just <laughs> a mess. Oh. I really miss doing this. I, I, yeah. You know, this this class really is helping me through whatever hell is going outside of. Oh, thank you. <laughs> class. So, thank you. I don't even want to be reminded of it. Yeah, you really keep Please. us uh, centered and grounded, and yeah. uh, it's well, that's it's just spiritual. Pain. Yeah. <laughs> you know, honestly. Um, um, <clears throat> some of you know that I was in foster homes growing up, but I grew up in foster homes and it was pretty painful. And, um, I think that one of the ways I, re ways I dealt with it was by painting. I do, wow. you know, I think that happens to a lot of artists and many it could very well be many of you as well. I just want to let you know that, uh, that's the way I think of this class. It's therapy. You know, yeah. funny thing is by analyzing things and by playing around with things abstractly as well, we we just, you know, it just releases your brain of all the junk out there, you know? Yeah. So, anyway. Uh, <clears throat> I love this tree. This tree right here is beautiful. And what I think is making it beautiful is the fact that it's silhouetting up against that background so nicely. Really oh, nice silhouette. Yeah. Which is, I'm kind of wondering, you got it light behind this one and light behind this one and then kind of dark in the center. What I would do is maybe lighten up some of the center. That's all I was saying about that earlier. Okay. Uh, by the way, this cast shadow down on the ground here is very beautiful. Nice hard edge, feels like a, a real crisp, really feels like high noon, you know, that, that those real crisp cast shadows. Um, and by the way, this silhouette's very nice as well. This is very, very beautiful. I mean, that is well done. Thank you. Don't you think? You should be happy with yeah, that. Yeah, I like it, yeah. Um, I, I feel like I've come a, a quite a ways from when I started painting it with watercolors. Yeah. You are. What, you mean what he's going to charge her? I don't know. What, what is he going to charge her uh, over there, Hector? Oh, oh I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I just <laughs> with you. Thank you, Rob. Thank you so much. So, yeah. I'm, I'm wondering if this, it kind of feels like you pulled a little bit of shadow over. I'm wondering if you pulled a little bit of that glaze over there, if it would feel like part of that was going in and out. I don't know. Like under the, under the water as well. That might have been a good thing to do. I, you mean I kind of don't like, I kind of don't like, and I know it's like this in the photograph and I did it in my painting, but I kind of don't like a one big stripe going all the way across. And you yeah. broke yours up. You had it stop here and then you kind of, looks like you almost pulled it into the water there a little bit. And I'm wondering, that might've been a good move to pull that into the water there. Maybe that's something yeah. I'll do in mine. Okay. Just, just I, sometimes I like to think out loud, just, just so I can, just so the whole class knows, you know, that might be something to do. Uh, put in, oh. pulling a glaze over that. So that anyway, your your foreground's beautiful. Thank um, you. Thanks, Rob. Yeah. Do you have any questions about this? Uh, no. Just okay. thank you for the classes. I'm just so happy to be back. Me too. <laughs> I know. It was a little too much time, I think. Maybe next time I'll just take one week off. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. Okay, thank you. Thank and... you. Oh, there's Joy. Oh, okay. Oh, happy. Joy is telling me about the portrait class. Some of you are taking that portrait class, huh? I just got this other email here. I'll tell you about it, huh? I know, uh, I have a feeling that class is packed. It might have totally packed. 
I no, signed up for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I noticed a lot of you signed up for that in the ad. I got, but that class usually packs. So I hope, um, I hope it, you know, I can have more people in the class since we're doing this. I, I, I'm limited in their classroom. So anyway, and here's Hector. Yay. Hey, Hector. Hi. Showing us out. Wait, here. Showing us your abstract technique here. So even though this is pretty darn abstract, you still got a lot of uh, compositional elements in it. <clears throat> you know, like a big mass here being bounced out by a smaller mass over here, which is totally abstract. Let's see. I know when I squint my eyes and look at this, it all comes together. You know, it's a good idea to look at these really small too. Um, I wonder if I can do that in here. Can I do that? It's a good idea. Oh, I'm sorry. To look at these. This won't get any smaller than that. Kind of does. Yeah. Really small. Whoa. Things really come together. Yeah. <laughs> and then to look at it, you know, I look at it like that for a compositional reason. Then I look at it like this. For the beauty of the paint reasons, and of course you never miss that. I mean, that's. But uh, now, what's going on? You know, these blues are bleeding into things um, in an interesting way. Why are they doing that? Do you know? Because I had it upright. Oh, okay. These are my inks. These are uh, yeah. the acrylic inks. And they dripped. Oh, okay. And by the time I got the uh, the paper towel, yeah, and I pushed into it, and I smudged it around, and I got the blue that I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you do. So it's, uh, I didn't panic. Yeah. Yeah, don't panic. I don't want anybody panicking. <laughs> I try not to. Well, it feels very foresty. And I like your lighter values in the background and your dark silhouettes. You know, oftentimes I look at a background as just a, it's just colors and values, maybe very indescript for me to, for me to then put my nice silhouettes over they kind of yeah. just function as a platform you know well it took me a while to to understand that so i i pay a lot of attention to that oh, and okay. then waiting once the whole paint uh the painting is dry then i can go back and even add more subtle variations in uh in glazes so that are start... in the light that are in the light do you do you right. actually start the painting about like when I'm halfway done with the crits? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> I, had a feeling. Actually, I actually wait until you're finished. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I know I because that's what I used to do in the plain air class. Back yeah. in the old days. Remember the old days? Yes. I can hardly wait to get back. I know. I, I want to get that plain air really class going. Um, just so you all do no, I do have a, a, a a real actual plain air class going through Art Center, but I don't have this plain air class. So if you're interested in that plain air class that meets on Sundays, it's all day Sunday. So some of you have taken it before, but I just want to let you know about that. Um, um, yeah, I, I like how this is bleeding into, uh, did you, it looks like, it looks to me like what's happening is it's bleeding into the white and anyway. You can yeah. have some nice bleed marks there. <laughs> yeah. I'm always really curious about that stuff. Um, let's see what else. Yeah, I love the cal calligraphic marks. Again, you know, Hector's another one that you know a Hector when you're looking in front of a Hector. When you're standing in front of a Hector, you don't even have to think about it. Having that much style and being that um, um, I wanted to say clear, but I meant uh, 
you know, you're, I should say, distinct. That's the word. It's so distinct. It's still so distinctly your style. That's how you get it. By throwing out the stuff you don't like and keeping the stuff you do. I've been noticing uh, there were some really beautiful paintings today. Yeah. Even though everybody says they struggled, but that struggle brought out some wonderful uh, yeah. paintings. They, I, I thought they were terrific. And so many unique styles. Yeah. If is everyone just be true to their style. Be true. Yeah. But everybody has a picture in their head of what they want, what they think they want, instead of the picture that's in them in them. Yeah. And you it's don't find that that until you do it. Pardon me? It's also in the way everybody solves problems. We we all do it differently. Yeah, I well to me what what uh, most of the ladies were saying about the problems they were having and what I saw what they thought was a problem I thought was gorgeous and beautiful. Yeah. And that goes to show and, you and everybody just, that, it, like you said Rob it yeah. you you got to put in the mileage. Yeah. So eventually they will see that that's what they weren't happy with is really uniquely their own style, but right now they're fighting it because they have another okay. picture in their mind that they want to attain. But uh, I don't, thought don't they fight were your way of doing things. things. Yeah, yeah. But it comes through the mileage. That's for sure. It's the all. It's in the paintings. That's the most important part, anyway. It's not the end result. It's the yeah. doing. It's the doing. It's the journey, right? Yeah. It's not the destination. So so um, we all solve problems in a different way. And that, that gives, that might shed a little light on um, what you might think of as correct. You know, because right. correct, what is correct? Credit, what is you make up your own correct. I can show you pointers and have things that are, might be giving you problems and whatever, but, uh, you know, yeah. But seeing other people's work too, yeah. and the the wide variety, yep. it yeah. it's bound to make everybody try different things. It just you know that, that it's is. okay. That is know. the best thing about this class. Absolutely. And I'm so glad we have so many different styles in here, and I I, I want to keep pushing that. Keep pushing that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But, yeah, that's a good, good thing to leave this class on. Yeah, what was it? Take that what, uh, uh, this is Misko. The yeah. way that you said that wait until the uh, rogue finishes his stuff. Maybe yeah. I, I should do that because I, 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 I always get torn. I yeah. like to listen what you said. If yeah. then I, so it's it's like a, a not really concentrating both my paintings and you know uh, your what you are saying I like to hear yeah so uh, maybe I should just do that and then later start yeah. painting you know Mitsuko yeah. that's yeah. very true that's very true that's why I usually wait because then. I go at it my way, and I try to what? hear what yeah. Rob has said through the right. whole uh, yeah. demonstration and exactly. see if I can attain it instead of trying to attain it while he's doing it because you can't uh, you can't see what the next move is going to be, and you're right. waiting. And that causes anxiety and angst. Whereas That's once correct. you see yeah. it all done, then you try it. I think you learn more. And, and, and that, it pushes you. It pushes you because you don't have that much time. I'm well, sorry. Real life plein air. That's the way we. I most people did it. We watched Bob's Rob's demo, and then we. Yeah. Did and they, exactly. I did a. I did a shorter demo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mostly but, those those demos were just sort of inspirational, you know. <laughs> but you did two, Rob, oil and watercolor. So. Yeah, I know that was crazy. <laughs> How do I do that? Um, oh, just so keep it, maybe you keep it uh, uh, 20 minutes or 30 minutes uh, limit on yourself. 
then we have time to do afterwards. I could do that. Yeah, I could do that. So just a shorter, a shorter demo and more time for you to work. Maybe um, we can combine the the color, color rough with the final. I want to write that down. Hey. Shorter demo. I like that. It, well, it gives you also, uh, when you have a shorter time, you stop thinking so much and you take chances and you just do it and go for it. Oh, and that's well, how you well, learn. As a counterpoint, I, I really like hearing uh, Rob's process as yeah. he's doing the demo and that's very valuable to me and and i you know i'm not proud you know i know i've got a long way to go <laughs> so i I'm not, i don't have so much anxiety um so maybe that's a little different but um you know it's it's very i think the tips are extremely helpful for me um just as a that's not what we're saying we're just saying Tricks. after he finishes people are going along painting along with him yeah. Well, yeah. You know, I, I'd like to leave you with this note. I, I had this great, great teacher. He was a very intimidating and, and incredible draftsman, uh, Harry Carmian, who taught at Art Center uh. for decades and decades. And I used to watch him draw and just think to myself, I'm never going to be that good. And then I would, I would copy him and copy him. I'm very good at copying. So, and I got so good at copying him. Um, um, you got lost. I remember, he, he came back with me one, one time and he said, you know, it, it's good to copy he goes but at some point what you got to do is I want you to do your own work and just listen to my tips listen to what I'm saying but try to work in your own style because you, you're not going to get you're not going to you're not going to get to where you want to be by copying my style but uh, so you know but definitely his method you know like if there's a there's a method to what he's doing but maybe um, Work in your own style. Anyway, we'll, we'll, that'll be a continuing conversation. <laughs> Good conversation. No. You, anyway. I thought it was very worthwhile what you just yeah. said. Yes. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. And happy, happy New Year. Yeah, Happy New Year to everybody. That was great. New Year. Happy New Year. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Happy Thank New Year. Thank you. Rob. Th thanks, Rob. Thanks, everyone. Glad you're well. Bye. Yeah, I am too. Stay well. Stay healthy, everybody. Stay that way. Keep saying yes. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Great. It's great to have the whole group. Yeah. Yeah, it is. So good. I think that was too long of a break. Yeah. <laughs> it was just one day a week wouldn't have been a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. I'll talk to you guys later. All right. I'll get, I'll get this thing to you. I'll get you Bye. the link on YouTube. Okay. Thanks, million. Yeah. Okay, bye-bye.